Hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome back to Yellow Jackets Live, the Monday morning murder podcast here on Faye Fire. I am your host, Faye Fire, aka Aaron, aka Faye Fire, whichever one you want to call me. <laughs> and I'm here with my lovely co host, Mandolin, the rat in the cage. <laughs> And <laughs> isn't that isn't that apt? <laughs> um, but we are very excited to be here discussing season two, episode eight, called "It Chooses." And this was an extremely exciting episode. Always, you know, the the penultimate episode of the season is always so exciting. So we've been waiting for this. I feel like it did not fail to entertain, and there was some tragedy and uh, just. A wild time. So, how are you doing this morning, Mandy? Good morning, all you Yellow Jacket enthusiasts. Play fire and uh, hello, all you citizen detectives. I am good this morning. Happy to be here, ready to talk about the episode. I will say, for whatever reason, my Showtime on Demand did not give me the episode Thursday night, Friday, like normal. So I had to wait till yesterday, like like half the world. Um, but there's just, again, so much in the show. Thank you, Ashley and Bart, for creating such a wonderful show for us to get in and dive deep. And I'm really excited to have you all here and start this day and week. Grab your coffee or milk. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but Walter Tattersall was drinking <laughs> milk from his wine glass. So it's my new thing. Serial killer uh, beverage, milk, you know. Leche. Also, I do want to say hello to hola, all my Latinos in South America. Eh, mucho gusto for coming. Thank you so much. Um, and I want to shout out to hola to my amigo Raul in Peru. Oh, I got a I got a shout out for our podcast um, about that from a friend in Peru. They didn't even know that we were doing it, and he's like, "Oh my gosh, I know her!" And so <laughs> we're getting. Uh, we have viewers in Peru. Awesome. Yeah. Well, cool. We love all of our viewers near and far. And so hello to everyone. And thank you all for being here. Thank you to everyone in the chat for being here too. Sorry, we were running a little bit behind this morning. But uh, let's say hello to everyone. I just saw Luna is here and Andy, my two, two of my awesome patrons. We've got Moni here, Mrs. Duncan the Tall, Yasi, Eric M, Kate, uh, Flopsy, I think you're new here. Hello, welcome. And of course, Kelly, the antler queen. Hello, darling. Very happy to have you. And Miss T. Um, I recorded a um, a recap episode with Kelly, the antler queen uh, this week. So definitely keep an eye out on her channel. If you're not subscribed there, definitely go subscribe. Um, and we had an awesome time. We stayed up way too late on Saturday night and just chatted about episode eight. It was so fun. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, and I've had a busy week streaming. I'm, my brain's a little bit fried. I'll be honest. <laughs> I did a stream earlier this week about the Winter King also. So it's just been a busy, busy week around here, around the Fay fam, around the Fay fire. <laughs> so, all right, well, let's go ahead and we'll bring up our, whoops, cover photo. And we had a big episode for Nat this week. This was just a, a wild episode. And there were a lot of um, similar overtones to Doom Coming, which is, you know, my all-time favorite episode. <laughs> um, a fantastic episode, which was also the penultimate episode in season one. So um, we saw a lot of parallels throughout this entire episode with that, with all the the running, the hunt, the um, Travis and and the parallels there with Javi. And yeah, it was a great episode. We're going to save the, the hunt until later on. That's probably going to be the last thing we discuss. So we'll kind of go through, discuss all of the characters, and then get into all the, the juicy... We'll, we'll dive into the icy depths to explore all the details of the hunt scene. <laughs> um, and if you guys have any questions, drop them in the chat. Um, we have a lot of thoughts, of course, about all the discoveries that were made. And Coach Ben, he had a big, big episode. So, um, all right. So Mandy, let's see, should we talk? Do you want to read through? Let me pull yeah, up let's the roll. episode description. You want to read through it? It chooses. <laughs> Shh. 
it's only going to get worse from here. Despite the whole winter's never going to end thing, the 1996 New Jersey State Girls soccer champions decide to start their spring training early with an impromptu cardio session. Callie encounters an old flame. Van proves goalies never say die. Most of the adults intentionally commune in the sharing shack. And Lottie, baby, I hear the blues are calling for tossed salad and scrambled eggs. Mercy! <laughs> and that last line there is a Frasier reference. So we got our, you know, 96 fix, <laughs> which thank you, Kelly, <laughs> who made me realize that that was what that was. <laughs> um, but yeah, this was a wild episode. Um, their impromptu cardio session, indeed. Um, Callie's encounter with the old flame. I was thinking Kyle might be coming back for, you know, a quick visit, but no, that sure wasn't what happened there. Um, and yeah, Van had a big episode, <laughs> Frasier forever. I am so crazy. I can't believe I missed that the first time I read or the first like five times I read through this. I'm from Seattle, you know, I should know Frasier songs anyways. <laughs> oh, good, Kelly. I'm glad you, whoops, clicked the wrong one. Glad you did that. <laughs> Anyhow. All right. So one thing we forgot to do before we get into the episode, we totally forgot. And actually, I totally forgot. Mandy reminded me several times. So I will give credit where credit is due. I'm just a space cadet. But I forgot to go over the poll that we posted last week before the stream. And that poll was um, about Crystal, Kristen. Uh, So let's go over the poll results. Hold on. Let me get in here. So the question was, what happened to Crystal's body? And the options I had put forth were the wilderness claimed her, Javi's friend found her, or something else. And there were definitely some creative ideas in the the comments. A lot of people just think she may still be alive. She may be hiding out. Or, well, people presume she may be hiding in Javi's cave, his lair. But although I don't, well... There may have been some evidence of that, but <laughs> but most people believe, yes, that Javi's friend found her. And yes, that is probably what the evidence was that we saw in the cave. So um, yeah. Which one did you vote for, Mandy? Or what what are your thoughts? Where do you what happened to Crystal? <laughs> well, um, I I have the idea that this is the underworld. I also think Javi is still dead. I think that in this episode, and we're gonna talk about later that Javi was claimed back from, he was able to finally cross or not cross, if, however you want to see it, but either way he was taken in the hole. Um, I don't believe she's dead. I think she's going to come back to haunt us some way or another, but I think, I don't actually don't even remember what I, I think I put something else or the wilderness claimed her. I'm yeah. not sure which altar I voted from. <laughs> Maybe a few. Yeah, it, was, <laughs> it was like a uh you know, 10 days ago or something that I posted it. So <laughs> yeah, I it's what I voted for either. <laughs> and then in this show, like, I don't know, but like everything is such trickster energy and it, and it's, you know, left open to so many interpretations, whether you want to think of it psychologically, you want to think of it in the mythology, mm-hmm. you know, Hermes Trudisca style, like however you want to think of it, they give you all this information, which you, my mind goes a million different ways and ideas and everything, which yours does too. And Mm -hmm. Sorry, I do have to apologize because we do tend to sometimes speak over each other, but we are just so excited and we're working really hard on it. Mm -hmm. Um, Erin and I have a banter for many years and we totally hear each other, but we're uh, working on some formalities here with y'all. all. Uh, So please (laughs) forgive us and I hope you stay with us. Um, It was brought to our attention a couple of times now. And anyway, uh, with all these interpretations, you know, I think there's a lot of point to certain deeper but it could just be what it is and like your adam impersonation or your adam um how you said maybe he just is what he is he's just a good person and someone who's good in the world and just an artist and you know that's it and i think that was true you know he was just who he says he was Mm -hmm. and the thing is is sometimes things are what they are and it's so crazy because they leave us on such a um you know, chase to see what the information is. And then they're giving us back. But either way, what are we here for? We're here to get down, dive deep, enjoy the symbolism, see the connections, appreciate the writing, because I think the writing and all the writer stuff 
you know, writers need recognition, love, and that somebody understands them and is doing deeper than what we see. So, yeah, yeah. you know, it's interesting. Like a lot of shows will, people will say, oh, you know, the writing isn't so good or what have you, but it's a lot of times it's so much deeper than people can really recognize. And so, um, you know, shows like, like Servant, for example, or even Yellow Jackets, for example, like some people just don't recognize the deeper storylines that are there or deeper mythology. And that's what's super fun to explore because writers are writers for a reason. You know, they are educated, they've studied their craft and they know, you know, old stories and tropes and all of that kind of stuff. And so they will reach far and, you know, get creative with it because if you're going to be telling a symbolic or religious kind of story, you have to find a way to do it creatively because people won't tend to just watch a story about the goddess or, you know, something like that. If you're very upfront about it, you're going to kind of narrow your audience. So, um, yeah, yeah. but we enjoy all of those fun, deep things. Yeah. I mean, on that, it's not just the writing um, and and we'll talk about like they've compared or the pictures Javi drew, they gave us the same layout in the sharing shack. Mm -hmm. Um, It's, it's all, it's everybody. It's the music, it's the cost wardrobe, it's everything that's involved, especially like the stage production setup. I've been seeing more and more and more connections now, especially watching back and with foreshadowing that I never saw before. So Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. They, yeah, they did, especially in this episode, they took a couple opportunities to do some throwback moments, like with Nat um, and the tree, like uh, when during the hunt, she kind of hides behind that tree. And that's a throwback to episode one, where she was, you know, trying to escape Lottie's compound and she hides behind the tree. And so it was very similar to that shot. Um, And just so many other things in this, in this episode in particular, so many throwbacks. This was a really big episode. And I think, you know, for many reasons, but especially Javi, you know, the loss of Javi, he was, he's a special character. It was almost like, because he's this, he's younger, he's sort of the child, he's innocent. And, you know, considering we just lost another innocent child, um, the idea of losing Javi was actually, some. I mean, completely caught me off guard, was absolutely the last person that I would have expected that they were going to um, to hunt down or to, you know, was going to be the victim, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, no, that's so true. And it's like, they just brought him back for us and we're wanting mm-hmm. to know why. Um, and that's how quick, you know, our theories change. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because like some of them I thought that would be completely wrong ended up being right. But, and, and, and that's the thing is like, I feel like it chooses, is all about, is it something that we found in the dark or found in nature or was it, was it human nature or that we created ourselves or was it like just a natural process or, you know, nature versus nurture? Do we nurture those ideas in a sense? I mean, it kind of does apply here. So mm-hmm. it's really interesting. Yeah. Um, Let's dig in. Let me pull up. I wanted to bring up, I keep clicking the wrong button. Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, I just loved the shot. You know, we've got the moose skull. This has become sort of their, their altar item, you know, this is what they use to commune with, um, with the wilderness and they each have their little offerings they put on there. And even despite all of the contention that has gone on over the past few episodes, even Shauna was participating in this prayer circle or this, you know, communing with the wilderness and this ritual, um, she's the one that lit the candle. And I, you know, that was really interesting, very significant because, even though she's not really participating, she and Nat are not participating in the sort of wilderness worship that's happening or the prayer circles that Lottie was leading, but everybody's involved in this, in this vote process, in this ritual here. And I do love, they called it the ritual. Um, Ashley and Bart, when they were in the, um, episode spoilers or behind the scenes episode thing, uh, they call it, this is a ritual. So, and I just really loved that. I thought it was a very standout wording. So, Um, but what do you guys all think is going on in the cabin? Because we saw, you know, we've all suspected and there's this idea that there may be like mercury poisoning or something of that nature going on. Um, But 
you know, and we saw a lot of these shots, this episode in particular, where there's this haziness kind of around whatever is focused on. We saw it with Akila and the mouse. We saw it with um, with Ty when she's like seeing her her other, you know. So uh, do you guys have any thoughts about what that could possibly be? Mandy, what are your thoughts on on sort of that, the hazy visualizations? Yeah, so one of the um, first things I noticed about the episode was as soon as they open, well, <laughs> after the song, it's funny because Ty's or adult side is like, hey, that song's going to be stuck in my head for quite a while. And I wasn't <laughs> sure if she was uh, talking about lightning flashes or or the song because that was in my head forever. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then also the theme song, I'll tell you, I absolutely love it. It's always in my head and it's always in my head forever. And I sing it in all different ways, you know, like I'll put it in Brazilian jazz, but like the words are everywhere. But <laughs> I do feel like, okay, so back to the whole opening thing. I think the cabin and, and one of the things I heard first as well from that was um, that when Javi comes in in the door, he's holding the wood and and he walks through, right? Right as Akilah's passing by and someone yells, get the door. And Akilah kind of looks, but it's kind of like Javi wasn't there. So I don't know if the Javi was there or not. Maybe the haziness was Travis like idealizing or seeing a dead Javi. I'm not sure. I know it's a little out there, but I just thought it was interesting that they do say open the door. So it made me think and reflect deeper. Is this some sort of doorway opening that is the cabin is part of the the psychological process like our dark unconscious you know it's something to think about moving forward as citizen detectives um and that's just one thing i wanted to point out but it like i want to go back and now see every time the cabin door opens does it is it reflective of the dad being able like the dad being able to see them because as soon as she says open the door akila comes and she recognizes and ty recognizes that's a dead mouse but if the door was closed, maybe she wouldn't, you know, like it's, there's something maybe in that thought process and idea and mm -hmm. um, poor Akila, like, I really loved her acting here and I loved what they did. Um, and I, I just wanted her to have a friend and I envisioned her like with the Charlotte rat, the Charlotte webs, uh, you know, the ratting, uh, the rat that does the whole scene with the Ferris wheels and eating mm -hmm. all the food and all that. Like, I just kind of envisioned them dancing in my mind, but. <laughs> yeah Akila's little mouse was very you know that was like a sweet thing that she just had and it wasn't it didn't hurt anyone you know it wasn't hurting anyone it wasn't uh, dangerous or anything it was just her own little secret that she had and um it was sad to find out that that was really just a, a delusion a hallucination and none of it was real and that's really tragic because it's just, that was a small, you know, a small scale of what's actually going on. And we find out later with Javi for sure. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was really tragic to see that happening. And then her just shock, her realization of just like, oh my God, what am I doing? You know, because she, I think she was afraid for her own sanity in that moment when she realized it, you know, she went from like joy oh i'm gonna make you a little you know a little house and all this kind of stuff and then to just utter like disbelief and she was very defensive like that moment i have a couple pictures here actually um that moment of her like when she's ty like what the what the <sighs> yeah she's like and it, ty's like reaching this was from the trailer and i was like oh my god she's gonna try and take nugget and she was trying to take nugget but uh in a much different context than i was assuming so <laughs> uh but yeah akilo goes from very defensive to just like utter horror at what she's been doing and she's just like oh my god this is you know <laughs> akilo that, hasn't that been one that's been um entirely affected by sort of or plagued by mental issues you know she's sort of had that um that light in her where she's thinking about her nephew and getting back to her sister and her nephew and that's what she really wants and so this is really really tragic in the aspect of it's probably going to really diminish any any hope that's left within her that should be a meme right there <laughs> picture like Oh, I told you. I told you not to do it. Um, so we got someone saying, Yassi is saying, I said it last night on the Queen's Room. I love the nod and homage to Kubrick shining with the bleeding walls. And oh, definitely. They're talking about 
a reoccurring toxic gas maybe from the releasing snow i like i mean i like the scientific like the scientific approach like that uh with the springs and things but i don't know if it the mining i don't know if we have actually seen that we just saw like one shot it doesn't mean that there's a whole bunch of mines but the underneath the tree thing would you know it it does open up the perspective a, a lot more of a hot springs or some sort of you know evaporated gas coming through evaporated chemicals like mercury or things yeah well we sulfur were studying, studying this week about um mercury mining in that area and there was a mercury mine in the area and it's shut down it was shut down in like the 50s or 60s um because it was you know leaching into the environment around it and there is still like a huge contaminated area including a lake that's very contaminated and so there's kind of these ideas like is this you know is the story structured around some of this, these natural occurrences. But one of the things that stood out to me um, when I was reading about it was that, um, so cinnabar is like a, um, a, a, I guess a crystal, a gem. I don't know. You see a lot of like hippie girls. Oh, cinnabar, da, da, da. But, um, but like it also um, contains mercury. And so, what I was reading about was that when cinnabar is frozen, like in a glacier, and then once it starts to melt again, those toxic levels of mercury leach off more so than just out of like the ground or, um, you know, wherever you would naturally find cinnabar. So some of whatever's been kind of tossed up and is loose in that mining area leaches out more of the mercury. So my thought was if they're in that area, perhaps with the snow starting to melt, that's probably the water that they're drinking. You know, they're getting it from the snow. They're not going out and cracking a hole in a creek or something like that. Um, they're probably just drinking melted snow and eating melted snow in their belt soup and all of this. And so it may be that they are starting to experience, you know, toxicity and high levels of mercury in their system. And it's having these hallucin hallucin hallucinogenic like effects on them or, um, psychoactive effects so and it's making them just weird and and crazy um and my thought also with that would be like perhaps javi is less affected by that because he hasn't been there with them all through the winter um and so he might actually be not you know not quite as affected as all the other girls he may not be hallucinating and all of that he's only been back with them for doesn't seem like a terribly long time so um thank you luna cascade we got a super chat um thank you so much and appreciation for the knowledge depth and passion you bring to the yellow jackets hive well thank you so much i appreciate that luna and you know what you're awesome you are an awesome patron and you're always here with us every week and i love you so thank you um so let's see let's catch up in the chat really quick um yes okay Angel Targaryen, maybe Sean, a representative of the earth and mother will come to power in spring, the season of the earth. Yes, indeed. This is exactly what we love to talk about. And I did actually, um, I have been studying up on the Eleusinian mysteries, which we talked about a lot last week. And I um, have been reading this book called Kore by um, Carl Karini, Karini? Um, who was a contemporary <laughs> of Carl Jung. And actually they wrote this book together. Um, his section is just, you know, like about half of the book, but Carl Jung also has a section in the book. Um, so I, if you guys are interested, I was thinking about reading a couple of passages to you. So just let me know when yeah. you'd want to hear. <laughs> we also like, we're working on a video and stuff for book club that we're going to include a lot of these references and stuff. Um, obviously after the episodes, things are busy for us this time of year. But during the summer, like, you're going to get at least 25 videos from us. And so that seems to be, no, that's my goal. No, that's my goal, y'all. That's my goal. Like, I have a, I have a legit goal mm -hmm. and want and desire just to share knowledge, ideas, and thoughts. And that's what I think our podcast, and I think that's what this group and you all are so good <laughs> with us. And we love it because we feel like you all inspire us a lot more, too, to think about these things and giving some of your comments and ideas. Um, I don't know. I just like I feel like with us, I want to just create this 
open, free, like everyone welcome to just express whatever ideas and theories you have. And let's just like evaluate and dig into them and learn from each other because that's what it's about. And that's what the girls are doing. And that's what life and humanity is about. You're supposed to share thoughts and ideas. And mm-hmm. I love it. And I like you know, from the core, the core, <laughs> core to all of our mythology to um, I was reading some some indigenous type of things today from the Wendigo theories and on. It's just so much fun to get in and um, thanks, you know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Andy. I love all these extended tie ins and readings, especially for the time between Yellow Jackets. Mm-hmm. And- Indeed. We're going to okay, feed yeah, you. We'll definitely bring out a lot of content for you guys and keep keep the keep the hive buzzing through Listen, the summer. Yeah. <laughs> when it gets dead, when the when the show dies this of this season, you can eat my body and brain. I'll share it. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll share my body. To... The person of my body or like the what's it called the before of my body knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> we sacrificed ourselves to you. I will, I will. <laughs> um I love what Kelly says here. So new revelation. Javi did I don't know if I'm frozen or it might be Mandy. Not sure. Anyways, uh Javi did in fact find the Queen of Hearts card and brought it back to the cabin. So he it was always going to be him. Is it me that's frozen? Am I frozen right now, you guys? Or is it Mandy? Okay. my frozen not frozen to me but not frozen okay sorry you were frozen it was, for a minute. it was freezing on my end too you were i mean i knew it was okay going. it was just it's okay just my... making sure i'm like oh, i don't know if it's me okay it's mandy okay my <laughs> computer's sorry, been a sorry. mess today okay <laughs> we're having technical difficulties we are it's all right it's just the it's just the new moon um <laughs> So, okay. I did want to share a couple of shots, even though we're going to save the, um, the hunt scene till the end. I did get, um, some really awesome behind the scenes shots, um, that I wanted to share with you guys from the, the lake. So let me pull them up real quick. I just wanted to show you guys these. I just thought they were really great. There are a lot of black and white shots. Um, so here's of the group, the huntresses. And here we've got them running. Just love it. These are just cool. I just love that they're in black and white. They're very eerie. This one's great of them just standing there. And, you know, um, I can't remember. Was it TV Insider maybe? Liv Houston was saying in an interview that um, this was actually a field that they put fake snow on. So it's all fake snow. Um, and then the scenes with Javi in the lake were actually his stunt double. Um, and they dug a hole. <laughs> he was pit girl. Um, <laughs> they dug a hey. hole and sort of, uh, re- remade the, the hole for him to be in. And then Javi actually filmed on a set, uh, on a soundstage. So, um, but, and then my favorite is this one and I actually oh, love it. So this one had like a boom mic stick that was kind of like crossed over into the shot. And I'm like, no, this shot is so gorgeous. So I edited it. I cut that out and here you all are my gift to you, my gift to the wilderness. <laughs> love it. I love it. It's great. Yeah. It's a gorgeous shot. Gorgeous, you know, collection of shots. I just love it. And it was probably like a very fun experience out there you know this is a a very you know it's a special scene so i'm sure they had a a really fun time filming it okay (laughs) what (laughs) yasi lada is a gorilla shaped mother with antlers lada which culture is that we'll have to look her up so yeah i was actually digging more into the indigenous forms of and stories and like the old school forms and I also was looking into um kind of creation stories with or with the Palladians and things and getting in on this um but I found some really fascinating connections that I you know definitely apply here I'm gonna have to come back with them because I can't remember them but a lot of it does have to do with shape shifting and the and the process of becoming a shape shifter um but that's 
no one really knows because the they it was a story that was vocally passed down and it was you're able to do it in indigenous um, myths and things like that and legends that uh, but extremely secret though yeah exactly and like the whole wendigo thing um and there was also a a witch that had like kind of these weird fingers and one time we saw the fingers coming out so like i don't know i gotta connect them though <laughs> but <laughs> another video um luna has this great question do you think that ben could represent the oak king that that will be his time yule will be his time to be sacrificed um i think that's a really interesting idea because there were some things in um in Javi's drawings that really led me to believe, and we're going to look at Javi's drawings, um, but that kind of led me to believe that a lot of this is happening during solstices or equinoxes, that kind of thing. Um, obviously, there's a lot of mythological tie-in, but um, the, and then we've talked about how the symbol um, is slightly different uh, from, from tree to tree from each of the symbols, they're just slightly different. And we had kind of talked about that potentially being uh, based on the position when the person draws it or carves it into the tree, um, their view of the the peak, because it seems like it's a peak with the sun behind it. However, um, you know, with the different positionings that could indicate, you know, okay, we're this tree's here and this is their viewpoint, or it could be a, you know, specific date that it's indicating by the elevation of the sun, you know, and where it's hitting. And so in um, Javi's drawings, there was actually one of him uh, or of the, let me see, I have it in here. I don't know if I put them in this folder, unfortunately. Here they are. Um, is, where... it in your, is it in your uh, puzzle manufacturers, reputable puzzle manufacturers folder? <laughs> Exactly. Uh, okay, this one right here, actually. Let me pull it up. Okay. So, <laughs> and I'm obsessed talk. with Bobby's I know. drawings. I like have so many. I mean, we can't. We're just gonna probably. Draw, <laughs> this probably is gonna be all about Javi, like uh, just all the craziness. But um, for once, not Shauna. <laughs> <laughs> for once, not Shauna. You know, we can leave her out tonight. No, I'm just kidding. We do have things to say about her. But um, <laughs> so, okay. So you can see like the triangle and then the sun behind it. And then I want to say, it I would, be the, the all seeing eye is how I saw it. Or like the opening of knowledge. It is the yeah. same, but like, listen, so this one's open and the one with the hair is closed because the hair represents Shauna. I think that this one represents the dripping. I think that that one is representative of Matt personally. Obviously the tree is tree tie and the other one of the crow or the starling is Lottie. See, my thought was this is kind of a, a solstice positioning and then the dripping is blood. So like, okay, we, the sun when at certain times of the year, especially in the Northern part, um, you know, it doesn't pass over, you know, the, the, um, what, what are the words I'm trying to think of? I'm sorry. Brain oh yeah. No, dead. like the eclipse and stuff. Yeah. I could yeah, totally so see like it being, sun, it's just like right now. Okay. It's summertime here right now. Literally the sun doesn't go down until like 11 p.m. and it comes up at 4 a.m. I have not been sleeping well. But <laughs> <laughs> so in the winter, we have it's dark all winter long, the dark time, right? So, um, so at winter solstice, and I'll take a line directly out of um, the Winter King, my favorite story, uh, that during that dark week, the sun just doesn't come up. The whole, there's a week of darkness is what they call it. So, and that's when the winter solstice is because the sun's not rising up over the horizon. It stays dark for, you know, essentially a, a whole week, um, depending on how high in elevation. Now, granted where they're at, they're not going to go through a week of darkness. It's not far north enough. However, they probably are only going to get the sun at a low elevation like that. So it, that may be the height, that may be high noon or what have you um, at that moment when that drawing is taken. So my thought is, is it's indicating that the dripping is indicating this is a day, this is a bloodletting day. On the solstice, we, we 
shed blood. We give blood. We give to the wilderness. You know, that's my thought is kind of what it's indicating there. But of course, you know, I love I it. Wrong. But I, I no. think I also, because that's like a creation symbol, um, the all seeing eye, you know, that one's very symbolic. Third eye brain, the consciousness, I guess. Exactly. Um, and like Lottie but, bashing her head in and all that. But like the triangle. And if you look closely, like it has like the veins, you know, in the eye. I, I looked really close. And then can you actually go back to the other page really quick to see the differences in between um I love the solstice idea, though. I didn't think of that. I was thinking more of like the opening of your third eye, whatever. So there's the one with, yeah, right there. So can we zoom in on the hair? Yeah. Oh, it's still in the background. Okay. So I was seeing, but see how it's like not open and the other one is. So that's why I thought the dripping was more of like not because she gave their blood to, like her blood is actually in the process or naughties. Um, but as we said before, we think the hair represents Shauna. And this whole picture, it's actually the same position as they are in the sharing shack. Mm -hmm. Or maybe the blood could be Lottie or whoever's like leading. But when they're in the sharing shack, she's sitting in the whole the circle windows behind her. And Lottie is in, you know, in or Lottie is opposite of her standing inside of the circle, too. So they had used a lot of visual imagery here with the set production and crew, too, which is why I was giving a shout out earlier, because we see this represented in that scene as well. And then the tree, um, you know, I wonder more about the triangles versus the diamonds, because to me, the diamonds are like reflective of, hey, they can go both ways, up or down, in or out of the conscious. Um, are we, you know, it's not necessarily that you know, that the, it's more that we're open versus like the triangles kind of closed because we're not getting both directions and our cycle or world axis or whatever we're talking about, um, you know, sun and moon. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, there's it, just like the symbol, I think it can have so many meanings. Um, I and like, you know, the the upside down triangle is like a feminine symbol, the yoni triangle, the, you know, upright triangle can be a male symbol. So there's sort of elements, like duality. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, like with the symbol itself being like a peak per chance, but you know, there's so many different ways of looking at it. And also just the idea that Javi was inspired to make these incredibly like elaborate drawings with sort of um sacred geometry and that kind of thing included in it is very interesting to ponder because like he's a young man and most young men have not been exposed to ideas like like sacred geometry or you know whatever and so there's this beautiful idea of you know he was in his his cave of knowledge you know he was studying it's very like merlin-esque um but also hermit you know, hermetic <laughs> yeah hermetic knowledge um his cave you know his cave of knowledge and so um i really think and then of course we still don't know about javi's friend you know who's javi's friend is still a mystery or maybe the wilderness it like, yeah is it the wilderness is it was it this animal you know this the rabbit actually i mean reminds me of so many things obviously shauna comes first to mind shauna and jackie um Church. jackie yes. being so connected to rabbits and then you know jackie also being so connected to persephone and underworld and like the cyclical nature of things um the three part mysteries of you know the eleusinian mysteries with demeter and persephone and hades um and so the rabbit and then of course there were the bones and i think that he may have like eaten a little rabbit, but it also may have come to him as like an offering or something, you know, specifically for him. Um, and it really seems like he honored that by, you know, commemorating the rabbit in art. Well, and that also goes back to, do we take on their souls and their energy when consuming them? You know, it's not just did like maybe those were rabbit and crow bones that he starts feeling that energy of the wilderness through him and his consumption. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, because we have to wonder like Javi ran off. He didn't have any supplies. He didn't have any weapons. He didn't have, you know, hunting gear or anything, or even like <laughs> really the knowledge of how to <laughs> hunt or trap. Yeah. He's just, a, you know, again, a young man, um, he wasn't really living a hunting and trapping lifestyle, you know, before they got out there. So, um, but 
his survival skills came in. That's where that's where we get our general like uh, the general unconsciousness that we dive into in those moments. Like that's where animals have their instincts. That's where they come from. It's like you kind of get it through your DNA is what they're saying is that like for example, spiders or our DNA changes to adapt to our defensive mechanisms or things that we need to do to live a normal life or live on a basis of these things. So maybe that kind of stuff was activated too as well, like something to think about. And then also the shapes. So not just feminism and masculine, it's, well, see, I think the triangle re represents like the whole person, but at the same, like the feminine and masculine, and then the greater part of yourself there. But obviously it can be a million things it does which is so brilliant which is like i love that it's open to our interpretation and there's no right or wrong you know there it just is however you see it your life but i also like the triangles too to represent maybe ele elements like we were talking about last night the primordial basic elements yeah go ahead <laughs> well that's and but usually that's more in five because like there's earth air water fire and spirit or ether like you were talking about last week you were talking about ether i don't know it's a lot i mean well but I, that one know. that okay. one is less like um that's less known actually it's like it's four but the five is there like the pleiades there's seven but there's six only that you can see mm -hmm. like i think that's kind of an overtone of this whole show too and and in the present Remember when we had all the ideas about seven and how seven is related to a million things in here? Well, we only have six girls in the present and we they did say someone else is alive, right? Or that's the theory. Or I think we heard that it was, can someone in the chat? It may just be no, that we've, we've decided it collectively. No, yeah. I thought, well, maybe, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that we read somewhere, somebody somewhere officially said that somebody is still alive we haven't been introduced to. So that, you know, that's why I was getting into the Pleiades. I'm like, hey, there's only, there's still one that you can't really see that it's there. And that was one of the first constellations ever officially, like, that they have memory of, stories of. All these different nations from all over the world have started with some of their creation stories from the that particular star grouping. And they have the Orion's Belt, the men chasing the Pleiades, the seven sisters. So we have three men. One, two, three, Ben, Javi, well, RIP Javi, and then uh, Travis, but they're chasing the seven sisters. And mm -hmm. we did think about sevens before, and I still think there's something to say about that. Um, yeah, there's def. I don't, yeah, I don't think the sevens, I, I still feel like we have a lot to learn for sevens. We have a lot of ideas of what it's surrounding, but we still need a, like a few more things to kind of confirm it. But I mean, the plane, the flight number being 25, 25 and um i mean there were technically seven that we've seen because travis was amongst the survivors but i feel like there are more there may be another female survivor another one or two um and i there was a shot uh, i'll find it later but anyways yeah i have my suspicions on who it might be i think and I, well actually I, my suspicions on who it might be are the people who drew cards. Yeah. From the group. So, yeah. And so, and not everybody, we didn't see everyone draw cards from the group. So we're going to get into that more later, but um, yeah. Do you think the I bones think, are here? Let's read Luna. Yeah. So the, so Luna asks, do you think the bones in Javi's hiding, hiding place were from Shauna's baby? I hope not. I, I I do the not. timeline, yeah, well, it just happened, and and I I thought maybe it was more of a um, he went to go dig up the bones from the other people, or like, or was was it coach's coach Scott's foot? You know, that was something I was funny, like because the airplane. Do you have the map of the drawing? The drawing of the map, by the way, the airplane wasn't far off from that, and then also like, I was I was thinking, are those actually Javi's bones? Because there's a Greek, you know, in, in Greek mythology and ancient times, they said, if you found bones of somebody, like quickly just throw some dirt on it. And coach had moved it around and put some dirt on it. So maybe that was symbolic of him, like being finally buried. And then now the wilderness wants to claim him back because we, his bones were, I mean, that's a little re reaching out there, but I, I also didn't, it's not 
not possible, you know, in the storyline, if you're connecting it, mm -hmm. if you see that, but you know, we see what we want to see, right? That's well, my, I looked at, I studied the bones. <laughs> I mean, my husband and I studied the bones. I, and I am a former vet tech and he is a hunter, uh, <laughs> but also I love bones. So anyways, I did find that there was they a tiny rabbit bone skull in the, oh. in the shot. And I have ones here in this little tiny rabbit skull. And then of course the drawing of the rabbit. Um, so that was in there. And then also um, there was the, so the animal, or I mean, the bones were a little bit small to be anything but animal. Um, there was a tiny rib, rib cage bones, but that doesn't necessarily. Some of them were mean, like, some of them reminded me of, of finger bones, of, of phalanges. I'd like, because when I looked at a couple of them, I'm like they reminded me of the, the knuckle parts or the bre the top phalanges. Oh. Yeah, I I just was noticed. I don't know, and but the only questionable one that I saw amongst there because also the bones, like I really don't think they were the baby bones because they're too no, dense. I don't think too so. Calcified. They are just too mature. The baby bones were so fresh and tiny. They just would have been like mush. They haven't um, even grown but, half their bones. The babies, right? <laughs> they're, well, their bones are very like flexible even because yeah. they're so like new you know even like there's their skull that's why they have the soft spot on their skull all their bones are fairly soft so i um i guess you would know if we look i think babies are born without kneecaps so or something like that yeah. don't we grow our kneecaps mm -hmm. <laughs> and then oh and then if you look at the skulls there's not the quite fusion isn't there in a lot of the bones yeah. either yeah they have the soft spot but um, also, I did notice, though, in the bones, in them bones, um, yeah, it didn't really look <laughs> like human bones to me, except for there was one tooth in there that was very distinctly human. That was, I mean, undoubtedly, that was a distinct human tooth. And I was so, wondering, I was wondering okay. why there's no, no dental problems yet in this show, because honestly, like, come on, all the kids and girls and this long and someone has to get a poop tooth pulled out sometime i know that would be that'll be an interesting one when they really start to kind of like deteriorate as humans <laughs> yeah Decom the decomposing like we mm -hmm. were suggestive in adam's body dead in essence um yeah but i don't know whose tooth it could be i mean maybe it's crystals you know that uh, the winning vote here was it, that that hobby's friend had found crystal so could it be crystal's tooth maybe that's where she went I don't know. There weren't a lot of other bones. And I feel like the time that has passed, it hasn't been very long since Crystal's death. So like that person would have to be like really mowing down. They'd have to really like consume that body quickly or have it stored somewhere else um, if it was Crystal. So I'm kind of more inclined to think maybe it was somebody else. Like maybe they went back to the plane and sort of scavenged from there or made some bone broth out of Jackie's old skeleton or something like that because that was accessible I don't know there's a lot of ideas of what may have happened but um but there was one human tooth the rest of the bones I think were animal but there was one human tooth in there so so that's kind of I mean the cave itself also I guess while we're on this topic so coach Ben you know he he gathers his hints he does his megasing um he takes the book the megas with him out to the cave um yeah. but essentially, you know he has that conversation with Nat and he's like wait so she says that Javi has been bowing she saw him pr praying to one of the symbol trees and he's like oh well which one and so um he goes out, you know, he gets the stuff, he checks the map, he checks, checks his map, checks the drawings, and he's like, all right, I'm going to go find this. And he does, he, he makes the, makes a plan and he goes and finds it. And, um, obviously, you know, well, he, essentially he's just the next initiate into the, you know, the cave of wisdom. And I did want to point out that Javi's card that he draws later is the king of Bates, was it? Yeah. And that card is actually for the highest initiate. Um, it's a king card, obviously. It's for a strong, it's the king of air. So air is going to be wisdom, knowledge, um, all of those kind of things, and somebody who can guide you on your your path. And so um, I thought that was really fitting for Javi 
for that card, but the fact that it's the highest initiate and we saw all of these other details like the drawings and we found the cave and there's all this mystery in the cave. Um, and, you know, obviously Javi was doing some internal, you know, navigating while he was there. He, you know, if he was alone or even if he was just with someone else, but he had the knowledge and the foresight to come when he came back, although his friend advised him, don't come back. Um, he didn't tell the others where he had been. He kept that safe for himself just in case. And it turned out that that was the smarter choice for him. Um, so yeah, so I have a lot of thoughts about Javi and his, his newfound wisdom, his cave of knowledge, his hermetic wisdom, and then coach Ben sort of replacing him. And, you know, the male energy in this story is obviously very, it's important because like we've talked about last week, how the guys were sort of a, a trinity, right? We have like the father, son, Holy Ghost sort of trinity going on. And so now we're transitioning into something else where Javi's not part of the picture. Now we're even more limited on those male resources. And then we think about Coach Ben's gone. If he's going to go and stay in the cave, then Travis is the only male influence that's in the group. And so there's a lot to be said for that as well. Um, and for him, you know, ensuring that he is, is, is a worthwhile companion <laughs> finding his own worth. So, okay. So, um, look at, uh, the Aztec comment by Yasi. It's a bot. It's numerology cards, 52, um, cannibal aztec civilizations that was okay. cool yeah Arthur 52 in famous cannibal aztec ancient civilizations they sacrifice humans for their cycle of 52 years and five gods interesting Love 52 it. 25 five yeah. and two is seven i was also trying to like connect the thoth tarot cards to this as well but um and there's how um, many tarot cards there's just 18 so the Thoth tarot deck actually did make an appearance in this episode because mm -hmm. the card that Melissa drew, and I'm not going to, I want to try, I'm making a video <laughs> for you guys about the card symbolism. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit behind. I meant to get it out to you this weekend and I just didn't, but, um, but the, in the Toth, Tahoth, Thoth, uh, tarot deck, um, which I have, by the way. That's the only one I use. It's the only one and I ever use. And that was based on like Egyptian. Um, mm -hmm. What do they call it? The decan, decan uh, yeah. system, which is like their form of the astrological, you know, mm -hmm. zodiacs or what have you. Um, but the card that Melissa drew, the Three of Hearts, is called Abundance in the Thoth Tarot deck, and it is associated with the sign of cancer and it is um also representative of the moon and i just think that's really interesting because and we're going to get into it you know like i was saying about uh reading about core persephone and i had that that i had made the the theory last week that um Melissa is going to become more involved with Shauna. And I think this may be another hint to that, the card that she drew. I think so, she's right. pick girl. <laughs> if, like if, if, if pick girl happens in, 90, <laughs> in 96, it's going to be her. If it happens in the future, it's going to be Lottie. Because I think that this after this whole episode with Lottie offering to go last and saying that the wilderness needs our blood, I think that Lottie is is going to be ready to sacrifice herself for the whole ben has cool card. <laughs> i don't like that come on give give coach ben some love oh by the way it's his birthday may 25th so he's also his gemini birthday is may 25th yeah and mine's well tomorrow Yours actually tomorrow yeah so everybody <laughs> happy birthday to mandy she's awesome thank Thanks. you so much for always being my amazing co-host and i hope that you have the most amazing birthday <laughs> well and then ben I, I thought of you because a couple of his movies he does he's named david in three of them um the goosebumps he's david's son so maybe he's the son of you know who knows but he's been, <laughs> so he's now david tremiscus to me coach Ben forever because now he's in the he's in that cave he's learning the the wisdom mm -hmm. and I think he's uh it's so funny because in this episode too when 
Mari started screaming. Ben was quick to say, hello, what's going on? And he's actually like, he's adulting now. Or so I say, I guess Coach Scott is now his adult name. That's how they refer to him or Misty did. And I think that's, that's his, kind uh, of his, his grown up name. His initiate name. <laughs> I'm grown up now. Call me Coach Scott. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is interesting, Andy. Um, Melissa's actor spoke on being afraid of why she was cast or that she'd be cast to be pit girl, but then they dyed her hair blonde. Interesting. Good to know. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Um, Luna asks, why is it that only Mari and later Ty can hear the dripping? Um, really good question. Um well, I think that it's more of a, uh, like, she, so I have this idea that her and Ty or her, it's either going to be her, Akila, and Misty, because the three of them, like, they represent, like, the, uh, the sty, <laughs> sty witches, Stygian witches, and that okay. Mari can be, kind of be an embodiment of, actually, the River Sticks and mythology, mm -hmm. but I, I also think that Ty, in this episode, particularly with the opening the door scene with Akila and her Ty is able and and she's and her, the, all the scenes with Ty and her altar or looking in the mirror her other is open her eye is open she sees tree Ty smiling at her she's able to see and reflect and pick up because that door is open for her is what I'm feeling the vibe is what about you? I feel like it's kind of for everyone. And again, going back to like Javi's drawings, you know, um, we don't know like exactly what the date is for them, but I feel like there's something to do with like the very heavy hallucinations that they're all experiencing um, may have to do with um, perhaps it's an equinox or a solstice date and they just don't know. Obviously they don't have a calendar, but it's like the wilderness is like pushing them, you know, and they, they do, they're all hallucinating. And then once the time comes, once they decide it's time to hunt, they're all like, you know, they go into that animalistic mode um, with the dripping. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I do agree. I think that Mari is just sort of more open and in tune. She can hear that kind of, energy the way you know in a similar way that Lottie can but it may just be that she's um, she believed like she believed in Lottie at first and she believed in it more and when they're all in tone to hearing the wilderness like mm -hmm. she, you're right she is more open than others but I think because I think Mari really identifies herself as like Lottie's I don't know Lottie's priestess or something like that she feels very like <laughs> connected to Lottie and she's definitely drinking the tea, you know, out there. She's always advocating for Lottie and like Lottie's choices and that kind of thing. And this episode was kind of the first time that we saw her do something sort of, well, maybe not back in season the one. Brat. Lottie said, yeah. But when she, yeah, does makes the comment about the pee and, um, but we're also, you know, in that moment we get we get insight into Mari's mental state because she is, um, she is, you know, kind of cracking. I mean, she does say that kind of rude comment about Lottie, but I don't, I think that was without much forethought. I don't, I think that was just, yeah, her being a brat. And just like Misty told her that if it's so nasty for you, then go dump it outside and get out of here. Like you little snatch and <laughs> so and I think we all enjoyed that moment of hearing Mari get told off. I rather enjoyed it, but, um, but, you know, when she's going down the ladder and she drops the bowl and you see her kind of stand there and just cry for a moment. And it was nice to actually see that side of Mari because she is always such a brat and such a little, you know, kind of antagonistic character um, that, you know, seeing her mental state and how things are deteriorating for her as well as for Akila, I think was really important for us, you know, for us to see that. Um, to give them a little more depth to their characters. You know, they're not just so one dimensional. Um, but yeah, Mari, I don't know <laughs> with the dripping. I really don't know. I think she's just a little more open to whatever is going on. I don't know if it may be like, she's having like foresight into anything that may be happening in the future. You know, my mind goes to like the Donner party where, um, one of the last or the very last person who was um 
rescued quote unquote from the Donner party was this man. And he was found in a really gruesome scene with like body parts all around him. And like, you know, a big cauldron boiling with thing, you know, body parts on over the fire and like buckets of blood and all this kind of stuff. And so my mind kind of went to that where it was like, what if this was like a, a scene from the past or a scene from the future or, um, you know, something like that. She's seeing something that happened with cabin daddy or, you know, whatever happened to maybe his family or something like that. So that's my thoughts with Mari. I feel like she's just in tune with other energy that's happening or having force foresight. Um, I also like, I would do want to point out scientifically valuing, um, that perspective and your minds and mercury poisoning, um, that is something that changes this, your urination smell, changes your body smell, changes everything. Mm -hmm. And so for her to make comments about the particular smell, just like, yeah, it might have been just an infection for her, but at the same time, it could be more if, if they are getting poisoned in that way. And it also makes you be able to taste things. Like when you have that kind of poisoning, things are metal tasting things mm -hmm. smell that way like it, it gets in your sinuses at an end you know obviously your discretion so mm -hmm. um yeah something. good point that's yeah because it was an interesting line for them to include you know why yeah eats, you know like it would be kind of strange for her to have a kidney infection that was causing odor that quickly but um yeah. well i mean she got kicked in the stuff <laughs> she got kicked around remember that was the part yeah. i was like oh my god like i was like for, as a mother i was just freaking out because how much damage that can cause you internally like she was just drop kicking her left and right and shauna plays that position in soccer you know what i mean she's like the she's like the forward the left forward or something like that and like i'll tell you i used to play that and i had to do kick-ins all the time corner kicks and that's a she's got a strong kick you know, mm -hmm. that's a rabbit kick too. And if we're comparing her to the hair, the rabbit kick can kill somebody or they like, or they used to kill their, hus their, their husbands conveniently in this episode. We're going to talk about that later, but mm -hmm. you can kill your husband by doing the same thing. Like the rabbit. <laughs> like, no, they do. They can, your they, husband. Kick, <laughs> they kick the crap out of their rabbits. If they feel territorial or if like their mate, they kick the crap out of their mate. They, that's how they kill people. Mm -hmm. It's kicking or kill other rabbits. I mean, it's not people, but it's how they kill each other is that way. Andy, Lottie's been doing that, serving tea with her blood. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, what that we, we were talking about that earlier, weren't we, Faye? Oh, here we blood go. Okay, tea. Yossi says, so that's what the Aztec calendar is. Certain times of the year, the gods of nature call to them and wake their hunting instincts. Yeah, there's a lot of cultures that, you know, that experience that or have like hunting rituals um, as just like a seasonal thing like i mean um, it's the oldest it, the oldest chase i think it's mm -hmm. the oldest natural Wild primitive hunt. instinct yeah mm -hmm. and it's the game you know it's it's there's a power of it there's a ceremony of it there's it's a ritual uh you know some of if we want to compare this kind of now to um what was that movie the the purge how they have the hunting of the poor and mm -hmm. you know like stuff like that there is a lot of a lot of that in here, and I think that it does have to. The spirit of the wild is the hunt. Are you mm -hmm. going to be hunt or be hunted? Exactly. Good point. Um, okay. Well, now we've been going for like an hour, and, and I also feel like we followed the notes in the slightest at all. <laughs> We're just like having fun today. Um, I did want to point out, and I don't know if any of you have taken the time to do this, but. Lottie's emergency number up at the compound, you know, if you call this number, she will give, there is a message there. And actually the message has changed from last week. So hopefully they'll do that again next week. But if you guys get a chance to, you can call or text this number. If you are feeling unsafe and you need the, the soothing voice of Lottie to coach you through it. <laughs> Should we call it? I can put it on speaker. <laughs> call it. Do it. Okay. I have her literally saved in my phone <laughs> <laughs> under Lottie Matthews. <laughs> okay. We're going to take the time to do this. Why not? We're like, we're not even following our notes today, but that's okay. Because you know what? We're, we've got lots of good videos coming up that I'm telling you, like we've been working on and we are just doing a lot. Here we go. Speaker phone. Oh, wait, I dialed it wrong. Sorry. <laughs> 
she's, she, the door is not open, y'all. The it's door is not open. <laughs> Four, seven, eight, one, zero, three, three. Oh, I have it saved too. <laughs> I did save it. Put it on the ear side. intrigued and a little turned on by that i didn't listen to it i don't know how i'm feeling i'm a little hot over here but that's not just about to be my girl crush you know what i'm saying but um she's yeah <laughs> but there was also a lot of uh sexual undertones with this and like the whole funny thing when when shauna comes back with the phone call like oh the sex call didn't turn out as planned fan says and then the whole idea of Shauna being turned on by serial killing. So maybe that, maybe they're playing here. I think so. I definitely think so. I just love it. I love that they even updated the message, you know, this it's awesome. week. Like, I mean, it's so clever. It's just every angle that they can hit. This show, you know, whoever's doing the marketing is like epic. Every angle that they can hit. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> um so we have lottie she is really messed up here um one of my favorite things in this episode is um or in these scenes of the younger lottie is how nurturing misty is because you know we spend all this time um, especially in this episode with the older girls where Misty is just talking about, you know, they're all just like, oh, Misty, you're a psycho, you're a serial killer, you know, all of this stuff. They're always like, you know, her set of skills, her hobbies and this and that. But she's like, well, I'm the one that's always cleaning up the messes for you guys. As usual, you're welcome. Um, and even here we see with Lottie, who is her number one caretaker? It's Misty. And it doesn't really matter like what's personal you know if there's anything personal between them or anything like that i feel like misty just knows and the card that she draws which is the eight of diamonds um is all about your your personal your your natural gifts your natural abilities finding what those skills are and honing them in so that you can use them in your everyday life and like implement them in your everyday life. So things that you're just naturally good at, how can you make, how can you make your life revolve around that? And um, I think we see here that Misty, you know, again, she has those nurturing, those caretaking skills um, that, you know, later in life, she becomes a nurse and um, she just does such a great job. And I loved it. Um, because we both wear glasses. So I, this like struck home for me, but those moments where she's laying next to Lottie, she's laying there sleeping next to her and taking care of her. And Lottie starts to get all, you know, kind of antsy and she's pulling at her clothes and, and uh, Misty, she has to like put on her glasses and then she rolls over. And for some, something about that for me, was just so like sweet and personal because when you're a mom and your kid is sleeping next to you and, and, you know, you're laying there, you're trying to take care of them, but you have to put your glasses on, you know, before you can do anything. It's just like a little nerd thing that happens. <laughs> but um, I just love that, that they included that little tidbit for Misty taking care of Lottie. Um, and she's doing such a great job, you know, and she, um, another part of her, her card was like, they don't have patience for stupidity, but they are good at teaching people things. Um, and I thought that that was really apt for that moment with Mari where Mari's like, oh, it stinks. And she's like, you know what, like, this is a really dangerous situation. You know, if you want to be here to help me, then you can help me. But if you're just going to act like a brat, like you normally do, then get out of here kind of thing. And I just loved it because like Misty's card was very, very perfect for her. So anyways, we're talking a lot about Misty, but we're also talking about Lottie. Um, what I really loved about Lottie here is that she, you know, much like in season one, when she hits her head on the glass, and she sort of opens up her third eye is sort of what I 
interpret that that scene as. Um, this is very similar. You know, she suffered these incredible wounds. And this is like very druidic wisdom, you know, a wound to the body, a wound to the mind and a wound to the pride. And that's part of the, you know, becoming a druid. You have to suffer these wounds. And um, Lottie's suffering that that wound to the body here where she's it's opening her up. You know, she can she's having those visions of other things that are going on in the cabin. She's seeing shots of the fire. She's seeing shots of the cards. Um, she sees them out on the snow running, you know, all of these things. She's having these visions. And I feel like this is part of her psychic abilities. It's been tapped into um, and meddled with. And it took, you know, these are, these are gifts. They don't just come, you know, they, they don't come free. You know, you have to pay to, you have to give to get, <laughs> what was that? They played that song, I think in season, season one or season two, but it's, um, you only get what you give. And <laughs> that's like very fitting for Lottie, um, especially in this scene. So anyways, what are your thoughts, Mandy on, on Lottie and her, her I'm broken state? I'm sorry. I'm reading the chat. Um, what's what's going on with this, Miss? What are we? What what's, what's going on with Andy's comments? I'm not understanding why they're getting. Cece, what's up? I think you're accidentally doing that because I don't understand what's happening here. What's going on, Andy? Yeah, Andy. Again, can you just? Are we having issues? Yeah. If, uh, why are the comments being deleted? Andy's are. Yeah, on my end, it says she, she was timed out. Why is Andy being timed out? Oh, I they were timed too. out. I'm so sorry, Andy. Yeah, That's I'm sorry. Weird. That should not be happening. That's really weird. I... Andy, I need to go in and make sure that you're modded on the Yeah, why don't you? So you know what? That's my birthday gift because I love Andy. Um, make well, them a Andy's mod. Andy's a patron, but for yeah. reason, it doesn't automatically. Andy, Andy gets, you get to become a mod now because that's my you, pick. Are you able to do that from your side? Um, I'm, I'm trying. Oh, see, look, she says I have my phone in my pocket, but I haven't intentionally. That's what I thought, because I think your phone is like, <laughs> your phone is attacking Andy. <laughs> it's the tree, ah, it's sorry, a tree Andy. phone. We're so sorry, <laughs> Andy. Yeah, no, I'm seeing your message. I can't, I don't know if I know how to do that. I'm, I'll have to do it again. But okay. like some some reason the aunt, and there are a lot of really good comments. So I was trying to figure that out. But okay, so anyway, we'll I move on. Yeah, I'm so sorry. We're so I'm sorry, not... Andy. If I hope you're still there and <laughs> didn't leave. Um, we're so sorry. Are you there, Andy? Please let us know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Andy. I'll see. Oh. What I can okay. So um, Hopefully Lottie though. Hopefully time out for like a couple minutes. I don't know. We'll see what. We happens. were talking about which one, adult Lottie or. or so younger, younger Lottie. Lottie. Like, okay. Do you have any thoughts about sort of her broken state or? <laughs> yeah. Older Lottie? Yeah. I mean, I think she was completely understanding. I love the fact that she said, hey, uh, let me go. If you can eat me, you can have me. Like she's willing to give. But I think she's understanding of the part. Hey, we're going to have to realize that it chooses, that we don't choose. And, you know, the, the flashbacks of Shauna and stuff, I love how they interpreted that in the daytime just to, or in the now time to make her seem like an abused character when she had the conversation with Shauna last episode about the goat. Um, I thought that was really great on Sophie's part or to uh, to ask her and about the blankets. And I mean, I, the just the dynamics and her between her and Shauna, I, I really am excited to see how that goes. Oh, Andy's timed out, so he can't even. I guess it has to run through. I don't think you can untime. I don't think yeah, you can says, untime you, it. I just put I, a comment in. You should be free yeah. in another two hundred seconds. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh gosh. Um, we'll make you. I'll make sure that you're on the mod list this <sighs> week for sure. And Andy, while you're here, if you want to send me, I know this is a weird request, but if you have your YouTube link like to your page send it to me in patron so oh, i can Andy. make it easy oh there, there we you go. are okay <sighs> thank goodness i was like no <laughs> we never can't. andy we love you i'm so sorry <laughs> it would not be the same without you like honestly <laughs> honestly um okay so okay moving on all right moving on okay all right, anyway, everybody Hi, hug. Hi, love everyone Hi, breathe hug, yes <gasps> stay fam congregation <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that okay. new moon energy. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I loved this, you know, going back to the older girls. I loved this shot because we got this shot like earlier in the week and everybody on Twitter was like, oh my God, they're splitting, they're splitting sides. You know, this is it. It's happening. Yada, yada. And then it was just like them having the conversation. But um, no, wrong. I disagree. This is them who are open and those who are closed because at this point, Shauna just shared her truth. She finally opened up. And then that's the thing about Shauna is that this whole like whenever she lies she says even in the sharing shack well randy and jeff are best friends so we can do it but when she talks and tells the truth she says well i i didn't i told jeff because well i didn't i i didn't want to be alone like she's very stuttery she's not able to speak properly she rolls her eyes she looks at everything but who she's addressing but when she lies to you she tells you dead in the eye and lies straight to your face and she and she'll have that thing but this is a moment when shauna was telling the truth and also you know those two had their back they're like shauna tell me why what is going on like tell me the truth and i think in this episode of all people misty is honestly the, the most honest people she really is in this episode and that is the one leading them through the darkness as if you've been following is my thing and that is very honest and open during these this whole like since the burial so yeah so it's not just them talking there's way more to it Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and Nat's character, you know, I feel like she and Lottie, as as usual, you know, they're the sun and moon, and they're rotating, and we see that happen again in this episode, because, you know, where Nat is becoming very open, and she wants to talk about it, and she's said it multiple times over the last few episodes, let's talk about this, we need to talk about this, and she's always getting shot down about it, and including in this episode, and like, it's really beautiful to watch Nat sort of opening up, because, you know, she has been through rehab and and you know therapies and that kind of thing in the past but i don't think she necessarily like it didn't resonate with her she wasn't taking that to heart and that kind of thing um but now that she's been with lottie she really is starting to you know take all of those things in and really like retain all of that and want to apply it and um Lottie is the one who's like, we can't, this isn't going to do anything. Talking about it isn't going to help. Uh, we need to do, we need to spill blood, which is essentially what she like stopped Nat from doing, you know, she stopped her from spilling blood, but, um, Lottie. Okay. So I wanted to share with you guys, one of my biggest sort of revelations about Lottie, um, throughout this season, which is, I feel like Lottie is the one that's lying to them. You know, the adult group. Okay. She drew the queen card, um, several episodes ago. She's the one that, you know, it wasn't an intentional draw, but it appeared to her. And so, and along with all of the things happening, like with her therapist and all of this, you know, it's really like calling into question her, her honesty and her, um, credibility, but she, she drew the queen card and she hasn't told anyone about it. And so here, all of them are ready to, go through and recommit themselves to the wilderness and do a huge ritual like this, or potentially one of them kill themselves. Um, but Lottie is not being honest and upfront and telling them that she already got the queen card. It already appeared to her. It was, she was already the one that drew the card and the other girls, you know, she's expecting all this honesty out of them. They're sitting there in the sharing shack. Everybody's sharing. The only one who's not sharing is Lottie. And well, she's think, not telling them the most important key component to this. And the the interesting thing about all of that is that Lottie is willing, even though she's drawing the queen card, which means her death is imminent or that she's the one that's, you know, on the docket, she's willing to let one of the other women take the fall and be the person to die in her place. She's willing to play that that game with the wilderness. And I think that's pretty like, well, I don't. Pretty remarkable. So, when when are you referring to when she she drew the queen card? When she was doing the cards for her group a couple episodes ago? No, when she was sitting after her very first therapy session that she has with her quote unquote therapist, she goes into her office and she's reading through. She's looking at the notes from her people in the commune. Yeah, that so that was like a couple episodes cards. ago. And then, yeah, this was like episode okay. three, maybe or four. Yeah. So I know I know what you're talking about, but that's the thing is like they were notes. It wasn't necessarily the queen card. Now the queen card appeared to her, but was that you know that's why she was kind of I think that's why she was going to the 
doctor. That's why she was going to more and trying to get more meds and trying to understand it more. Cause like maybe it was her vision or maybe she did draw it, but it wasn't was actually trying... like drawing anything though. And then I see, we see forecast forecast for next episode is them. Let's do this. Like we used to. And they're drawing cards again. But like that's in some of the this. stuff. Javi is the one that orig- he didn't draw a card. The queen card came to him and he brought it back to the cabin with him. So he didn't draw the card, but he's ultimately the one that quote unquote drew the card. The card came mm. to him. The card well, came to Lottie. That's my reason why Javi's dead. Hey! Exactly. And that's <laughs> but- <laughs> the reason why Lottie is meant to be dead. Lottie is yeah. next on the docket. I see. Here to her. Okay. So, you know, but yeah, she's I not agree. willing to share. She's not willing to share that with the other girls. She's not telling them. She's not being yeah. honest. You know, the whole thing with Nat when she's like, oh, I think it's time to surrender. Lottie's not surrendering. She's holding back. And so, and she's lying about it. And well, that's I think that's messed up because they're yeah. all relying on her for this therapeutic, you know, right. advice and guidance and that kind of thing. And she's the one that's holding back the biggest secret of all. I see that, but I don't think it's the biggest secret of all. I, I, I disagree with you there. I think they all have really big, dark secrets that are coming out. And the whole thing about the sharing shack is all of them were lying. The only one who actually was calling the truth was Misty. And then they had to dig out. Every single one of them lied straight to each other's face. They said, mm-hmm. well, Shauna, why is Jeff now? Why does Jeff know? And then, of course, then it became, once you call them out, it became a projection thing. Like, they mm-hmm. they deflect they they deflected. Like, well, why am I the worst person because Nat's a drug addict? Like, why are you bringing that up and saying that? That that actually really ticked me off, and that made me just despise Shauna more. I'm sorry. I, I don't like I, – it drives me crazy that she does stuff like that. Well, because, they all did pe- – Ty I know, did but, that like, but Nat <laughs> didn't deserve – like, don't come at her like that. I'm sorry. Don't come at her like that. She's she's done a lot. And then also I love this episode that she turns down the drinks all the time. Now, if you want to look at that as her being reflective of her being able to guide through how because she's not drinking in hell but she does and I think there's a lot to it but the point is is that they were all deflecting and then even Ty had to lie and Van had to come at her and be like what is this I understand I know you're lying they throw in keys Shauna was like oh well Van are you insane which is gold mine coming out of Shauna's mouth but beyond <laughs> that like Misty's like okay well, let me tell you the truth and she did but even you know she had to say well Misty you finally did kill someone and Nat was like thank you for your honesty but I like I don't think and Ty like you had to dig it out of her they had to dig the truth out of her well Ty why did you hire Jessica Ty why did you do this and it all of this they're coming out with all these lies and truth and calling each other out so finally they're coming to the point where hey I'm just gonna have to tell you the truth because this is it but with Lottie the whole circling back around um I think that it was more of a hey I understand the wellness is me and 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 I'll choose last, but I think she knows that no matter what she does, she's trying to save herself in the, in some way or another, but no matter what she does, she can, like, she's just prolonging her death, but at the same time, like, drinking the Kool-Aid isn't, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Yasi, I, yeah, Lottie, culty liar. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like Lottie, and I like what she's doing, and I, I feel like Lottie's one step ahead of the game, you know, from the rest of the girls. The other girls aren't, they're not like they haven't been working on their healing and this and that like the same way that Lottie has. So Lottie's already like ascended to a place where she can kind of look at what happened to them a little more subjectively. But um, whereas the other girls are not quite like mentally able to look at it that that clearly. But um, but, you know, yeah, I feel like she is being manipulative in this situation, but only because she knows that, like, this can be bargained with. You know, it, there's there's loopholes and that kind of thing. And that's something they've learned out in, in the wilderness. And I think Lottie yeah. even tried that, too. Like, she was trying to... Um, to bargain with the wilderness when um sacrificing stuff when she cut her hand when Mm -hmm. she went out there and she's like can't this be enough you know and i think she was really hoping that that would be enough but then more and more of her friends started to show up and then she started to realize you know whatever was happening with the therapist and all of that and so i think like she's having Mm -hmm. these revelations um but yeah, I don't know. She's just so, trying to you know, manipulate it as much as she can until yeah. you know, it's not going to work anymore. Well, I think also this is part of that whole shamanistic or wounded healer character type. She's going to have to go through this death or realization. She's going through the dark night. And if we're talking the shapeshifter, you know, complex, 
that that kind of I feel like is something Lottie could possibly be turning into or if she has embraced or like that's that spirit came into her um so that's interesting to think but it's all coming out in them and she is if you notice she's in the dark side like I when I said Shauna's baby there was the light side which is like Misty and a couple other and they're all like kind of on the dark side again and Lottie's there and when they're sitting in the shade um, sharing shack reminiscent of the photos we looked at of Hobby's drawings with the the you saw the window do you have a picture of the sharing shack but like so we see the hair we see shauna with the sharing shack in the window because that that the whole window scene is like really if you put it net side by side to the pictures you'll see what i mean so there's the window but like if okay so see she's on the dark side the people who are lying who are not accepting their truths they're not you know they're deflective they're not they're projecting they're projecting everything else on everyone else versus coming to terms and that's why I thought it's sad and crazy, but everyone thought how insane Misty is. Misty's a psychopath. First off, I want to say psychopath doesn't mean you have to kill someone. Shauna is just as much of a psychopath, maybe a sociopath, because she doesn't let out her feelings and things. You know, like they all are psychopathic in their own ways. And if you want to look at the definitions and things, it doesn't mean you have to be a murderer. But this is the first time Missy has actually murdered somebody. But I think that Missy, of all people, again, is being more honest here, which was hilarious to me. And she even, you know, admits to being the FBI. She misses all these things. I think it's interesting how Nat is really quiet. But if you look where Shauna is sitting, um, so Lottie gets up and she will cross and go across the room and she'll stand up. And there might be something to them being sat and standing up. Who's the queen at the moment? Like, I feel like We've always wanted them all to be antler queens, but in this particular time, we and when they're drawing cards in the in the youth, Van actually has youthful Van 96 Van has the antlers behind her. And if you see that scene, she's really powerful. But whenever they're in power, is I think that they become that queen character and it switches between all of them. I think they're all the antler queen in a sense, but you know, this is where they're all equal for a minute. And the standing up shows power, it shows it takes them over, it shows a lot of like you know, just, hey, look, this is what I'm here to lead you. And Nat in this, in this scene as well, and as, and as same in um, last episode, she's the one lighting the candles, which is symbolic of how Lottie was in 96 when they thought she was the queen. Nat is kind of taking the lead, but she's not just taking the lead like, hey, follow me like Lottie did. She's like getting down to an understanding level. Um, and there, she's recognizing the darkness in all of them and saying thank you for your honesty thank you for that mm -hmm. i think that's something that we said absolutely yeah i think you know and i'm sorry i was <laughs> my daughter just got uh, called homesick from school so that'll be i might have to step away for a few minutes <laughs> in a little bit here um but yeah um misty you know <sighs> Missy is being really honest and she is kind of the, the clean, she's the cleaner in essence. And I loved that scene with Ty where she's like, oh, you should have just called me. I already had all this information. Um, and, you know, Ty, um, like you were saying, she's not being upfront. She's not coming right forth with saying anything. And Van can see through it all. You know, she can, she sees that they're all lying. They're hiding something. Um, and I love that even Lottie in the last episode, you know, she pointed out, like, if you don't deal with your issues, they manifest into these more terrible things. And the, the other girls were kind of like, ha ha ha, you know, it didn't really, um, impact them, but now we're seeing all of those things absolutely are happening. And, um, and it's not just Shauna, you know, Shauna, yeah, she did the most major thing that's going to get them in the most trouble, but, um, well, Ty is, well, I don't yeah. know, but that's what I'm saying. Like, they, it's not one is the worst of them, but Shauna mm -hmm. seems to project that. She says, well, I'm not the worst of you. And she wants to always defend that where it's like these other two are saying, hey, we're all bad. <laughs> we're, it's in every one of us. Even Nat is like, hey, it, it's the same in all of us. And Well, I think Ty doesn't. I think Ty's like in denial. In a oh, always. I mean, Ty always. and Shauna. But, you know, I feel like Ty, she's just like. She feels like she can justify the things that she does, like hiring Jessica and, you know, mm -hmm. I don't well, know. Well, it wasn't me. Hey, well, uh, 
that's Shauna's problem, not mine. Doesn't have to do with me. Exactly. She's very, yeah. We did, yeah, we were there for you. We were helping you. But, you know, Shauna had a good point when she said, um, I'm not the only person that has, you know, secrets to be exposed. Yeah, so. but she, yeah, but she did it in like a different way. There's a different, there's a way to, she was deflected or projective of, like, hey, well, Nat's is this it. And then she wanted to attack other people versus say, like, hey, let's expose our secrets mm -hmm. or like openly do it. Like, they had to still bring it out of her. And mm -hmm. same with Ty. Like, they're both really, really broke. And like, I feel like, okay, so I feel like those two are on the deep end. And I feel like um, Van and Van is kind of like, and Missy are kind of in the middle. Whereas like the sun and moon with Lottie and Nat are kind of always flipping, returning. But yeah. And this right here, Luna, exactly. This was what I was thinking too. So Ty, when she went to Jessica Roberts' apartment, she got the folder that um, Jessica has been, you know, keeping on all of them, um, including, you know, if there's another yellow jacket and um, she left that folder, you know, it was like her, her altar, her other, the other one was the one driving that car. And that was even the car she took from her, campaign manager you know from the hospital she was like do you have your car i need to borrow it she takes the car drives it goes to jessica's house gets the folder keeps driving towards van until she runs out of gas and then she gets out but she left the folder in the car and i really feel like that is a huge going to become a huge issue like that's that's going to come back in a bad way to bite them um I agree. And and yeah. that's the thing with her and Shauna, both Ty and Shauna, they leave stuff everywhere, evidence everywhere. And it's funny because Missy's like, you didn't listen. I told you I live very specific directions. Matt's like, hey, are you stupid? <laughs> like, yeah, what the heck? Like, I should have just done this. And that's why I love Shauna admitting, well, I try everything. I try it. Well, you're right. No. And she stutters and like rolls her eyes. I, I'm telling myself that. And she doesn't, you know, she won't tell you in the face, but again, when she looks at you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's really, yeah, these girls. Um, and I'm glad they're all being honest, except Lottie. But um. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, Lottie's being honest, too. I just think she's, um, she wants the wilderness to, like, double check her or cr double cross her eyes or something like that, you know? Like, I don't think she's open as much as she thought she was, and she's kind of been put through this whole process where she has to be denying that power and she's been doing it for years and that was her healing what she was told and now it's coming back to her and she's scared you know so I don't know if it's necessarily like she's lying about it I think she's just not sure about mm -hmm. her or herself you know she's not sure um but yeah she's still lying in a sense to herself which is why she's represented in the dark side oh I love that okay <laughs> so, well, uh, yeah, let's finish Misty first before we go. Let's go. Do yeah, we... we'll jump. Well, let's go into, I think I've got older Misty here. So, um, and actually, well, I wanted to get to this photo right here. So, oh, <laughs> so, okay. So, um, Walter gets an him. email from, you know, he's on the citizen detective forums and all of this. Well, he starts getting a bunch of emails because Adam's body was found and, um so people are letting him know and <laughs> no wait can, can we say who the people are though because that was the part i love the most is his his friends are in the thick of it 33 red herrings and then um shoot what was the other one i have it right here <laughs> i was dying at the uh at their names and then uh 33 red herrings in the thick of it and then the sammy the sleuth Who's Sammy the Sleuth? Oh, interesting. Is you it, know, uh... Kelly and I had, Kelly the Antler Queen and I, in our conversation that we had um, the other day, uh, we were suspecting that potentially maybe one of those might be um, Officer Saracusa. Um, and he might be like, you know, hanging out on the forums trying to, you know, gain insight. And in the trailer for episode nine, the finale, Walter's there and he encounters Jeff and he says, will you help me clean up this body? And so he's like, I'm a friend of Misty's and he's wearing all purple. So I think that, you know, and yeah. so basically Walter emails the police after he sees all of these things pop up and he says, I have some information about your case. Um, and then he goes in and he packs up his stuff and he pulls out his purple jacket <laughs> and he's ready Takes to roll. Suits. So. 
Um, I think most of us initially were like, oh my God, you know, he's turning on Misty. He's been using her for information and that kind of thing, which is like, you know, what we've all been suspecting the whole time, just based on like Misty's history, right? That this is something that coach had done to her. And my thought was always that Walter and coach were like running on very similar, um, like a parallel storyline throughout this whole, you know, season. Cause I've heard that Walter has one season arc, although I really hope that that's not true because they, we need to keep him. We need, Walter's pig girl. <laughs> we need to keep him. They kept Van. Okay. They kept oh. Liv Houston because their performance was so amazing. They were like, we, we got to keep Van around. So I need you to do the same thing for Walter. Walter needs to stick around. We need him. He's epic. So Elijah Wood is so complimentary to the cast. I love it. Let me get it on here though, because I have to I have to bring out all the little details on him. Not just was it the purple clothes, it was like a purple tuxedo suit. And was that the same suit he was wearing in Misty's Dream? I don't know. But how dope is his house? How amazing is like I'm I'm in love. Like if I ever had if I ever had like that one night or whatever with some famous character or person, if I have like my past, it's gonna be Walter Chattersell. <laughs> <laughs> honestly um if you notice though he's making not just one puzzle there's two puzzles two separate completely separate puzzles on a folder on his computer it says reputable puzzle manufacturers okay he's drinking milk from his from his actually that's a aperitif glass a digestive type of glass like those mm -hmm. are the drinks you drink after so that may be something there with the milk and Ooh. the digestive or after you know what i'm saying um mm -hmm. and then beyond that the the picture one of them is a cat a cat in a in a, a space suit the other one is a boat reflective of his boat um mm -hmm. and beyond that what was the other thing i noticed oh the Okay, but anyway, all these little things of him just made the character so amazing. And then his the names from the people, Sammy the Sleuth, though, what I thought about is that is that um, possibly Ty's wife or Sammy, little Sammy, you know, is there a connection there? Because yeah. we, we see Ty's wife, you know, and Ty leaves all of these little trails behind her. So... Maybe she's trying to get her, you know, be it proactive is, here. Yeah, it's a very interesting name choice. Like, I mean, that's not random. And yeah. on that note, are we ever going to see, are we Are we not going to see anything with Sammy or Steve or so Simone for the rest of the season? Sorry, we. I just needed to throw that out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Does anyone else, like, in the chat, like, throw, throw out some info here? Like, what are the reasons? So when I saw the 33 red herrings, obviously red herrings, but like 33, the 33 de degree of wisdom, you know, it goes back all to that sacred geometry, or if you want to do Illuminati cult type stuff, 33 red herring, maybe, or cult, cult red herring. Um, what are some of these names mean to you? Because I would like to know, you know, maybe some of you know before I have to go on a giant hunt online about it. <laughs> Not that I won't go on a hunt well, anyway. Well, 33 is like 11 times 3. Yeah. 3 is like, you know, a big number. 11 is a mystical number. So, hmm. Yeah, I definitely know the, like, symbolism of 33. But I'm one, like, Jesus 33, 3, 3. I mean, there's so much with that. But I'm wondering if someone knows specifically per, for this. And mm -hmm. I wanted to also ask the chat or people... Do we know the, okay, the park, the Hatters, sorry, what's the name of the park? Um, um, Hackleberry. Hackleberry Park. Yeah. Maybe there's something to the name there as well. Hmm. Hackleberry. Hackles are Hackleberry. what you call it uh, on a dog or a wolf when mm -hmm. their hair stands up on their back in like, um, that's what you call their hackles. <laughs> Probably not Sorry. anything substantial, but yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I love this. I mean, Walter, you know, again, being such a man of mystery, we just don't know exactly what he's up to. And, you know, he just keeps, he's, the man is an onion, right? But I do love that the milk, you know, that's very um, in, you know, in movies, <laughs> he, they do that a lot with serial killers. Um, just his whole vibe. He's so weird. And, you know, I don't know about you thinking that this is the dream, dream man in the dream house. Because honestly, if I seen a man a living alone in a house like this, I'd be like, this guy's a serial killer. And he is. <laughs> yeah. So, but I don't know. Um, yeah, it's 
Well, in the next one, we see, hey, will you help me with this body? He says to Jeff, oh, hi, I'm Missy's friend. I, and I can't wait to see where this goes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really can't. And then, you know, it's funny is I also thought Jeff was a, a lot of people were giving him hate last season. And I think hopefully this season he's grown on you. I think he gets oh, the MVP yeah. this episode with Absolutely. opening up um, the yeah, way we'll, he did. Actually, let's talk about Jeff and Callie next. I'm going to, okay. we're just kind of, we're not going on, um, we're not following notes. We're just winging it. But let me pull up this. But I feel like um, the whole Jeff coming back, um, he, the cops searching the house. And Jeff says, do I need a lawyer? Lawyer. He does everything Misty tells Shauna to do, but he does it naturally. <laughs> and then he also, what a man. Like, everyone thinks, oh, he's just a manly man, boring, everyday guy. Well, that's the point, I think, of his archetype. He's supposed to be the everyday man. And not only is he the everyday man, he's becoming the hero because he's saving and protecting his family in ways that, you know, and he doesn't see it, even though with his dream and everything. But he doesn't see it with Shauna and doesn't want to believe it and sees her for more than a murderer. And I think that the show is starting to project and, and show ways that, hey, psychopathic murderers are everyday people too. You know, we can't just, <laughs> just because they're one, they do something bad doesn't mean that they're all completely bad. Or is that yeah. just regular nature? Is it nature versus just nurture? So. Or is it like a traumatic, yeah, something that is trauma-based that happens mm -hmm. to someone that fundamentally changes them, you know, on on that level. So um okay let's get into jeff though <laughs> um yeah jeff so i mean he was yeah i agree i think he was mvp this episode um you know he held it down when the police showed up i really feel like officer Syracuse's whole um like he's very antagonistic. I really think he's you know they're obviously doing good cop bad cop with him and kevin and um they're trying to see, like, I really feel like Syracuse is trying to bring out that crazy. He's like, I need to get a reaction oh. out of these people, mm -hmm. whether it's Callie, whether it's Jeff, whether it's Shauna. Somebody's going to give me a reaction and I'm going to antagonize them until they do because I'm going to prove that these people are psychos. And he really, yeah, like Syracuse goes in there like swinging dick and he's just like oh yeah you know come on boys we've got a search warrant you know and he's all gung-ho and excited. let's toss and it up I, toss up that salad toss it up he says oh my god a and salad so, reference yeah, and i was freaking out um <laughs> while i was watching the scene because i was like does callie still have the id in her room me too adam's id i was losing my mind but actually Kelly, the antler queen she pointed out that she believes shauna took the ID when she took Callie out to go have the talk with her. And I was like, oh yeah, oh, that's catch. a great point that I did not think of because I was absolutely at, like having a heart attack while I was watching that scene. Me um, too. I was, but that was exactly everything I was thinking of. I was like, where did she put it? Away? And he was looking underneath the, the stuff, the drawers. And he was actually like in that drawer when like he, he was right there in that spot. Mm -hmm. But I did like how he was quick to say, like, she was trying to lie to him and manipulate him just like her mother does. And she was, he was quick to say, well, maybe they'll see how your mother's just an insane liar and that it, it didn't fall far from the tree. That's, the tree, quote that's unquote. Where I, no, listen, that's where I made the connection with, um, in the thick of it, it, Walter's guy that emailed him because he said something like, she's a man, a man eater. eater or something like that mm -hmm. and and that's what Syracuse said he said oh the apple doesn't fall far from the fucked up man eating tree and I was like that's really weird that they used man eater twice in one episode because it is a pretty like specific phrase um and so yeah but, I like they know that they're yellow jackets and the whole theories behind that but yeah I do agree with you I thought those the tree like the tree where we're talking coaches in the tree, yeah. the tree of knowledge, the tree of life, like, you yeah. know, and the whole, we get our, we get these recessive traits or these traits from our parents um, and they're in our DNA or in the um, subconscious mind, you know, or even when they actually, when they burned the journals and they burned Adam's ID and all his stuff on the barbecue and then the tree caught fire in that scene. Oh my god! <laughs> so, Wait, are you just uh, yeah? Like, yeah. see this, don't, guys. This is why we love this show because every little <laughs> like it's like we're going, we're digging, we're digging, we're we're aimlessly digging. If they, yeah. they give us an episode, and then we hear like, oh shoot, we got to go back to the beginning and restart mm -hmm. it so that we can find the whole 
circle circle of information again. Exactly. Oh, yes. And great point. Why was the bad cop allowed to search Callie's room alone? I agree. It's like, yeah. isn't there some sort of like, um, you know, uh, what's the word? Conflict of interest in that knowing that <laughs> like sure. she's, she's already said, oh, this guy did this to me. Um, and, you know, I appreciate Callie like filming that whole thing. And she was being also antagonistic where she's like, you know, um, you're, oh, the other, um, whatever, the other like bad cop or whatever, you know, whatever she said. But, um, and I feel like Syracuse, when he's like sitting there saying whatever back to her while she's filming, he was almost like doing that in an effort to cover his own ass because he was like, oh, well, nice try lying to my, my partner saying that, you know, we slept together and yada, yada. Like, of course he says that on camera, you know, he's just, he's very antagonistic. I hate that guy. Like I really, you know, and I feel bad for Callie because like Shauna wasn't wrong, you know, when she's like, oh, cops are sexist and you know, whatever. Like, I feel like she did give Callie some good advice in that regard, but they didn't do enough. And also Shauna is not the shining example of what to do when it comes to dealing with the police that she did a terrible job. So, <laughs> um, yeah, but, um, so then we have the scene with Jeff and he's having this nightmare. Well, actually, before we get into that, so they pull Jeff aside and they, you know, make him look at the photos and they're blaming Shauna for all of this. And of course, yeah, Jeff's like, do I need, oh, careful, don't pull on that. Okay. Um, and, um, wait, so can I talk about the body though? So when they're yeah. showing, I'm going to let you talk because okay. I'm going to go and deal with my daughter for a real quick second. Okay. Okay. So they bring Jeff in, they're showing him the body pictures asking him hey look at this before you say no like do you think shauna is capable of this even though jeff knows he she is he still lies so that's why he gets my vmp because or mvp because the MP, mvp because that's where he's uh protecting but i had this really kind of connection with this um i made a joke actually on twitter a while ago that when i started seeing the symbol i started seeing it everywhere one of them was the vitruvia man or Vitruvian Man from um, Leonardo da Vinci, I was like, oh, I see the symbol in sacred geometry. But, okay, so there's a theory that the Vitruvian Man, when you cut him, cut the man in half, that or that they cut him in different ways, um, there's the way you learn it in art school. And then there's also another way that is um, cut into 14 pieces where the goddess, the god Set did to Osiris, he cut the same, he cut Osiris the same way. And when you look at the pictures that they give Jeff, they cut him basically the same way that Set cut Osiris and cut them in limbs the way Osiris did. Now, I don't know if they did the same thing with taking out his eyes. And, well, no, because we know he put, we that Misty put the head of Adam inside of the, the burning uh, coffin. But I just wanted to say that that kind of popped in my head. Maybe it's going to spark some ideas with you guys in the chat and with you guys. Um, to think about it but again there's that sacred geometry or that conscious thing the thing i love about it is quick jeff is, says well they're so precise that shauna couldn't do it right and he and he swears up and down shauna can't do this that there's no way because like that doesn't sound like her even though he knows that she killed him but i don't think he knows the whole extent that hey we cut him into all these pieces I think Shauna, the less you know, the more the better, Jeff. And now in this dream, he's coming to the point, do I have to realize that she is a killer? Can she possibly come and kill me? And it's going to be so interesting to see where they take it from here. I think, um, what do you guys think in the chat? Like, do you think that Jeff is going to be killed by Shauna? Like, give me some love and we'll we'll talk about that. Says Jasmine says, oh, wait. I'm sorry. I can't highlight this the thing, but Missy love Missy does love Plato, and that sounds like Plato's theory of soulmates. Yeah, soulmates, or I like the idea of um, yeah, your what is the one your other that you can never have your twin flame, where you have twin <laughs> fresh rabbit dinner for anyone. Okay, but yeah, I definitely think it's possible that Sean is going to end up killing Jeff or that Jeff is going to sacrifice himself for that situation. But Jeff was also like the MVP here because not only did he do 
take over he he just didn't say he said let's do the lawyer let's keep it going like i'm not gonna do anything to incriminate and beyond that it was like the part where jeff later consoles with callie i mean how much should we love that he really opened up he saw that she was there drinking a beer kind of dad in pain that's not going to help you let me take it with you but he also tells her hey i love you because you're smart like your mother the first things he comes to is all these wonderful things about shauna hey uh yeah you you have all these connections you think like her but then she, callie says no like am i crazy like her well and he still defends shauna he talks about how shauna's pain what she went through how she lost a baby how there's understanding and love there and to me, that was just everything because she didn't project. He didn't put her down. He just made her out to be the real person she can be. And Shauna doesn't even see that in herself. Callie doesn't see that in Shauna. The only person that recognizes the good in Shauna, I think, anyway, that's just to me something that touched my heart personally. Um, maybe, maybe there's something in the air. That's what I want to be seeing all the time from the people I love. You know, is I want to because I we all do good bad things. I'm quick to forgive. I'm a very forgiving person, and a lot of people just aren't, or they'll hold one little thing above you, or they'll make you out to be a bad guy because you say one thing or you do one thing, or you know, like this is true forgiveness. This is true loyalty. This is true love. Seeing past the uh, the facade, and then even when Shauna comes back in his dream, you're the only one that understands me. He feels that way. And I think that he feels that way about her too, because he was able to finally open up. And I love how they're they're referring back to the Shana, let's do something more exciting. And now they're bringing back, hey, let's exciting by our kill you. <laughs> sex is exciting. <laughs> like you want some That's kinky great. sex. Let's do some death stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good catch. I didn't think about that. Um, yeah, you know, this whole scene was extremely touching. And if you've already talked about it, excuse me, I'm sorry, I had to run away. Um, but uh, what really stood out to me in this moment is that, you know, Jeff opens up to Callie and talks to her about the baby. And I feel like we as the audience have been a little bit unsure if that was actually something that Jeff knew about. Like, yeah, he had said that he had read the journals, um, but, you know, I think a lot of us suspect there might be some maybe like me personally, I think Shauna has another journal that she keeps on her at all times, whether it's in her van or in her purse. Um and that's part of the reason why she was so protective over her van um, is because she's really nervous about what they might find in there. And I think it may have to do with the baby. So I think there is a question of if Jeff actually knew about the baby, which was answered here. Um, and what's so touching about this is like Callie, you know, she was she really had that emotional moment because, you know, when as like an only child, people wish for having a sibling. And thankfully, Mandy, you and I, we come from, we have plenty of siblings, but. Um, <laughs> Which is why we always are like used to our banter, banter conversation, yeah. because we do, we come from big families where people are loud and, you know, flamboyant in many ways. So, mm -hmm. um, hey, but, can you highlight uh, Ju Juicy Jesse's uh, I'm a Jeff Truther, Jeff Stan, and a lesbian who supports male wives. <laughs> hey, awesome. I, I love, love that. you. I love, wait, that yeah, love that. Love that. <laughs> love you. I love but, you. But um, I, there, sorry. I, so you were talking about Jeff. Um, yeah. You were, yeah so, um, so, so yeah, so Callie, you know, obviously she has a moment of like, oh my God, you know, this, this moment of reality where she realizes she had a sibling um, at one point and, you know, she doesn't know exactly what happened to them. Um, but as, you know, an only child, she probably, that's something that she probably longed for growing up. And actually um, there was in the original story, Shauna and Jeff did have another daughter. Her name was Molly and she was written in in the very original script, but they, you know, took her out. Um, and I thought that was really interesting, especially considering I they wonder, I wonder if that was 
like the ecstasy part of the role. Yeah, totally. <laughs> like, ecstasy exactly. part they of the role. They, Feel those they keywords Molly, there. <laughs> yeah, they didn't leave Molly completely out. Um, but so yeah, so I thought that was really interesting. But then also, you know, Jeff, I feel like had this moment of realization here because he says to Callie, he says, you know, that's your your mother's burden to bear. Um, and and mine, I guess. Oh, and I, I feel cried. like he kind of like had a moment of realization right there where he didn't know, um, or he didn't, it didn't really dawn on him, you know, Jeff, he's a bit of a himbo, um, but it didn't really <laughs> dawn on him before that um, the trauma that Shauna has is always intertwined with him. It's ultimately going to be intertwined with him, whether it's because of Jackie and the guilt she feels over that, or whether it's because of the baby and how fucked up she is over that, because she is very plain and simply, she's quite messed up over the baby. And that's completely understandable. However, that was Jeff's baby. And she's also kind of kept all of that really secretive to herself for years and years. But I feel like Jeff just, it just dawns on him right in this moment that, wow, this is an incredible burden that she's been bearing. And I've let her do it all on her own, even though I've known all this time about it, I let her do this all on her own and look at what it's manifested into. And so I think again, you know, going back to like his dream where you were saying like, and I think it's really true. Those things that Shauna was saying to him in his dream, I think that's what he, you know, he does love her more than anyone else. He's all, like, she, he is the only one that understands her because he's the only one that like, she's been, you know, really on, or well, she hasn't really been honest, but he's seen her journal. So he knows what really happened. And so I feel like he had this like realization, this moment he's of taking, like, oh my God, this is, yeah. this is all, we're, we're in this together, no matter what. I agree. I can't, I'll never be removed from this situation. I agree. And he's also like taking, he's taking acknowledgement, like you said, but he's mm -hmm. taking responsibility and that like, I cry when he said, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. it's my, my journey as well. Mm -hmm. And that's like, that's a true spouse. Like they, what's yours becomes theirs. That's a true marriage. In mm -hmm. my opinion, there's a lot of marriages like keep things separate, but that was just so touching. It really was. And it's, you know, it's so sad for and Callie then, because she's. <sighs> but he tells her, Callie, you can be what you want. Like you can do. And I think we see that represented to Callie in many ways, like in, in the police office during the interview, you know, you're your own person, Callie. And I think that's the point here is seeing our, is it in our DNA? Is it something that we're learned or, or not learned that I learned you schooled you or is it something that we're schooled? Is it something that we're taught or, you know, yeah, a part of us, can we overcome this in from our parents? Can we overcome this problem? Can we overcome our, you know, the generational curses that we have bestowed upon us mm -hmm. and the love he showed there and like just the hope that he has for his child, no matter what, and his wife. So and I think we also learn, you know, especially over the past few episodes and how like when Sean has become a bit more honest about things like Callie hasn't exactly had a normal childhood, I don't think, because, yeah. you know, I don't feel like Shauna was excessively nurturing or anything like that. And, you know, we can see that Callie is like a pretty callous person, like her name, <laughs> her name has so many like, yeah, you get to play with it a lot. But um. But yeah, she is a bit callous. And I think that's because, you know, Shauna admits that she kept her daughter at an arm's length. And so Callie may not have that loving, um, you know, she hasn't exactly explored that loving side and of herself, that loving only children or like a feminine loving aspect of herself. You know, I think she yeah. does feel more connected to her dad. I think we see a lot of that in these past few episodes, you know, her and Jeff in the kitchen together and, you know, them on the couch together here. And, um, yeah. And so I that, think Jeff, oh. you know, he's realizing those things about his daughter as well. And I love when she's like, you know, am I, am I like mom? And he's like, well, sure. You're smart. You can do stuff. Yeah. And I'm just laughing at myself because I'm like, that's such a, you know, dad answer to give. But then he's, you know, that's the moment he really starts digging deeper. Cause I think he realized, oh, that wasn't, yeah, that's not all that. And I think he even realized that's not all that Shauna is either. You know, I don't think mm -hmm. Jeff, I mean, as much as he is a great husband, 
I feel like his whole MO in life has been, I need to take care of Shauna so that she never has to go through anything traumatic like she did before. Like anything she's ever had to go through. I think his whole thing was just make sure she's happy, she's comfortable and she's safe and she's protected. But in doing so, her personality, her brain, everything that makes her really special for who she is has been diminished um, by yeah. doing so. You know, when you're kept at home and, you know, as much as Jeff for every from a good place like he, he may be well intentioned it's not necessarily what's best for sean yeah for every for every action there's a reaction and the mm -hmm. cause and effect and i think that that's also predominant you know in the hermetic wisdom and as well as just in general and they i think for that like callie like you said she's a solo kid she's a single kid and no no offense to all you you know only children out there I'm the oldest of 14 and I now have only one child. Um, and I said that I would do that on purpose. And now that I'm raising him, I'm like, man, he misses half of what I learned. He doesn't see these things reflected and Hey, it's not just all about you and what you want all the time. So I'm trying to make him that I was like, let me make him like an equal part of me and my spouse. Let, let me, you know, try to make him that. But now, now he thinks he's like a, well, six years old and he's telling me what he wants to do. I'm like, Felix, come over here. Let me come do this. He's like, no, nah, I'm good over here. Thanks. He literally responds that to me. <laughs> like he has his own opinion, which is great, you know, but how far, as can you teach stuff there's always a good and a bad you know of everything and i think that's reflective here and callie particularly because as i said before she i felt like she was a projected of shauna that shauna couldn't actually be in that cage state that you were just re referring to and that's what she put her in her child is she became a voice for shauna's inner but the thing about callie was callie never she was like, mom, why are you lying to me? Tell me the truth. I want to know the truth. But now that she talked to her mom and her mom said, it's okay to lie, lie. She's been lying ever since. And so now that they're kind of flipped, like they have like a dynamic between the two that has op of opposition. Is it always going to be this opposition between them? I really hope not. I hope that they're going to find an imbalance, but this opposition I, I feel is going to play hugely into season three um, or maybe uh, there's so much that ideas theory wise that we can do with Callie <laughs> because there's Callie's pit girl. We'll see. Yeah. Very good point. I'm um, going to grab something. I'll be right back. Sure. No problem. And when you get back, we're going to do, we're going to go over our song of the week before we get into the hunt scene. Um, yeah. Callie, you know, she's such an interesting character and it will be, it'll be fascinating to see what happens with her. Um, I hope that, you know, there, yeah, the idea of Callie being pit girl, I think would be kind of fun to play with, you know, the more that we get into this, because we're seeing, you know, what a profound effect the wilderness had on Shauna as an individual, and then also how that affected her, like as a mother. And so if Callie is sort of delving deeper into those ideas, like, you know, is she going to follow mom? Is she going to try and track mom down? You know, my ultimate idea is that they're, the women are going to head north. And while we're on, you know, the, this subject, Ke uh, Kelly, the antler queen, <laughs> I know I keep referring to her because we had such a great conversation the other night. Um, and she should be releasing that, um, sometime this week, but anyhow, uh, she pointed out that on the forum that Walter was on, there were a couple of news postings. And one of them was that there was a huge car accident on route nine. And we don't know exactly where that is in proximity to where they are, but my thought is that may end up coming into play um, in the in next episode because you know probably the police are going to be hunting down Shauna and all of this, and so hopefully you know depending on where this accident might be, is it going to hinder? Um, the police from getting up to Lottie's compound or, you know, perhaps, yeah, create an opportunity for the girls to get away, the women to get away, I guess you might say. Um, so and, oh, can we and talk about, more, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was going <laughs> to say one other news, <laughs> one other news posting that was posted on there, or it wasn't even a news posting, it was like an advertisement that was off on the side, but I loved it because it was a tree, it was like a tree and wilderness and like a lake or something like that. And it said, 
something to the effect of like summer is calling or something like that. And it just really made me think of the girls in the wilderness and it's winter and summer is called, it was just the wilderness is calling, you know? So anyway, so, what were you Okay. Gonna are you going to share, should we, should we sneak peek the pin, like pinches? We so, okay. Aaron, yeah. Aaron, Aaron texted me over the week. She's like, I found the girls. I'm like, what? She says, I found them. I think I know because I, in some forums, everyone's talking about where they are in, in North of New York, but nah, we think they're above Seattle. We've talked about where we are in, in the, in the British Columbian Bermuda Triangle, which mm -hmm. is a real thing. It literally is. And then we looked at the silver mines, which you talked about, but tell them about the lake. So, so Aaron has literally what I think she found them. I think, I think, Fa I think Faye's found them. I'll, I'll read you. I think the lake is called like Pinche Lake. Like Pinche, like Pinche. Yeah. And, um, which is, in Espanol is like, uh, means a little <laughs> something else. <laughs> but yeah, th this is like, um, you know, there was the mercury mining in the area and then um, runoff. And I think this lake might even be like, um, you're not allowed to go in it or something, you know, it has a high mercury content. But nearby the lake also there is a research cabin because this whole area is a research forest that's owned by, um, I think, like the University of British Columbia or something like that. And um, in partnership with the local native tribes, um, and I'm sorry, I don't have their names right in front of me, but, um, but yeah, so they have their main research hub that's closer to one of those towns. And of course we've looked at the map before on here. I don't know if I have it. I'm not going to search for it, but anyways, um, the map of BC. Um, so where we had kind of discussed them possibly being, there's like a road in the South, you know, or South of where they're at, like Vancouver, BC um, is over here. And then, you know, there's, but up here is like very uninhabited. Yeah, there's a road, but those towns that are marked along there are very sparse, barely populated, you know, just very like, uh, there's just not a lot of people outside of actually like the hub of the city. There we go. Pinche Lake. Yeah. So, um, wait, so there's Pinche Lake, but okay. I can't, I wish I could just pull this up. I'm sorry. Maybe I don't have, I'm sorry. I don't have it reconnected because I've been lazy. Aaron's been yelling at me to do this forever. But if you look closely, there are, there's also a few little small little lakes around that area. So we think it's like that area because there's this little small lake around there too, that has, um, similar vibes with like mountains next to it. Same as the lake. We're going to, we're going to go more into this. We're going to have to find the exact. There's like one be below it. Yeah. Yeah. I remember lakes, but, um, and what's so interesting is they're like, um, that's where we So essentially are. the university has this research forest and they're located. The, the main research hub area is on, you know, one of these roads that's running through there. Um, and, um, but they have a research cabin that's only accessible for part of the year, for half of the year. And in the winter months, it's too covered by snow and all of this. And then we talked about earlier in that area there, um, you know, with the cinnabar and the mercury mining. So mercury is, um, is found within cinnabar. And, you know, they use mercury for, um, for bonding with gold. So people who are, um, you know, mining or not mining, but they're looking for gold, panning for gold. They'll use mercury to bond to the gold and hold it all together. And then they burn off the mercury and then they're left with their gold, right? So this is a common practice, especially in this area, you know, think about like the gold rush, which took people up to the Yukon. So they're all passing through this area and panning for gold, mining for gold. Um, but then there were other mines going on, you know, the, the mercury mine and all of this. So I found it really interesting that in this research forest, which is obviously going to be sort of like a private forest area, um, that there's this cabin. It's only accessible for part of the year. And, you know, it's surrounded by this, the mercury leached land that's all around them. So I just think it's all kind of like, hmm, I think that's where the girls are. Now, what's interesting about this cabin and about the research forest in general is the group of people that founded it and I'm sorry, I don't have the man's name offhand, but I believe he was like from the native tribe and he was um, 
the tribal leader, I guess, in, in this, he's, he, you know, was advocating for this research forest for starting this forest, and he ended up dying. Um, he was, I believe they were working on this between 1991 and 1997, and he died in 1997. And I think that's when they founded the research forest after that. So my thought was like, is he cabin daddy? Long story short, is that cabin daddy? <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's really interesting. They kind of look alike, you know, based on skeletal whatever. But <laughs> and the one picture I saw of this man, this is just loose so, spitballing yeah. with you guys. But let's just, yeah, go let's ahead. Let's some more. So I'm looking now. I'm I'm Google search. So there's two Bermuda. There's a Lake Ontario Bermuda Triangle that they're calling, but there's actually one in British Columbia. That's what we're referring to. I'm looking at it. It says Kames Mine and the Saddle Project and the Dace Lake. Um, but I can't get closer. However, I did find benchmark gold and silver. Benchmark drills 52 GT gold AU. What does that mean? 52, 25, reverse? I don't know. Just I don't know what it is, but it's talking about a type of gold, maybe. Hmm. Does anyone know about that? I that'd be clear. fun to I, I know that'd be fun to do. But it <laughs> is okay. So this Bermuda Triangle, it definitely is in that in that area, I think. Yeah. Okay. So I 50 think have a map. Let me see if I can share the map over here. Hold on. Duke's Ridge Zone, Duke, <laughs> the Devil Dukes, <laughs> Blue Devils. I don't know. Share screen. Okay, you got it. But this is it. So, oh, and it's over there. By yeah, let's go. Okay. Woohoo! Over here. Come on a journey with us across the window through your screen. <laughs> We're going so, on a journey to the other realm. Like, and we've talked about this before. Like, okay, let me zoom out on another map, but basically like, oh, I went a little too far. Okay, Vancouver's down here. So we have suspected, cause you can see like, it's really not super populated. There's not a lot of cities and especially once you get up here. So there's a big road that kind of runs along. I don't know if you guys are map nerds, but I totally am. Mm -hmm. But there's a big road that runs along here, cuts across, okay? Now there's a couple towns dotted along here, but these are really gonna be very sparsely populated towns, probably like, you know, maybe just small, maybe even native, you know, villages and that kind of thing. Oh, wait, but, shout, shout out to Fort Frazier. Maybe that's why they're putting Frazier. <laughs> well, yeah, and there's another town that's called like Germans Town or something like that. So um, what we've kind of suspected, yeah, Fort St. James is kind of like where we were suspecting that they might be Yeah, they're in this general area. Because I think it's like Fort St. James might be where the research facility is. I could be wrong. But anyways... 45 kilometers from the oh, research yeah. station is where the cabin is. Um, it's 45 kilometers north of it. Well, it so, looks, it looks and like I, it. And this is also, you know, if you calculate 600 miles north of Seattle, it takes you right about in this region, just north of that road, right? Whoops. Look, there's Houston in the heart of the underground. Hey. <laughs> so but I, I, I'm suspecting, so here's Pinche Lake. We know there's mercury runoff in this area. It's documented. Mm -hmm. There are scholarly papers. There's tons and tons and tons of information about this being an area where there is mercury runoff coming from cinnabar, which has been frozen in glaciers, which probably comes from, you know, the rocks and the terrain being turned up anyways from mining activity in this area um, in the, you know, first half of the 1900s. Um, so they probably upturned a bunch of cinnabar and that kind of thing. And so as it freezes and this area where there's this, this cabin, this research cabin um, that's only accessible by part for half of the year because of the snow, because the area gets frozen in. So it's all kind of ties together. And I love it. I just really think that this this is it. They we're we're looking at the general area where they are. Watch, they're gonna end up being in New Jersey the whole time. <laughs> I, know, I, mean, I hate how like I because I think somewhere at one point, maybe from like episode one, there was some someone wrote Tricks. somewhere that they were in the Ontario wilderness. And well, I think that has to do with Lake Ontario in the that's where they say the 
British Columbia Triangle is is yeah, but it's or so like that far. area. Like and that, so and they wanted to say that like some of the theories were Algonquin, which is like that's the area over there. So yeah, that's on the western and and the, that the Algonquian native languages come out of um, that area, like the northwestern and like Alaska. So. Oh, hey, uh, Moni G, she says something about a Yellow Jackets con. Erin and I want to, we want to get, so Faye and I, we have. Um, we have her. high aspirations, high hopes and dreams. Yeah. And what do you guys think about going, flying to Alaska? Because uh, Faye has, Faye has some connections in Alaska and they own a bunch of properties we can rent in a small little town and then we can just go dress up in some you know mask and stuff and go parade in the wilderness together like, i'm down <laughs> exactly. I'm wants, i want to get dress? naked in the wilderness <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> wait hold on i <laughs> i want to have yellow jackets con here in alaska in the wilderness so if anyone from showtime is watching it you know <laughs> just contact me and we will make plans we can make this happen i live on a very beautiful island in alaska and we can bring those who are willing to make <laughs> to get lost in the wilderness. I will make it happen. Yeah. Us. <laughs> <laughs> Who said Don't worry, there will, there will be minimal bloodletting and sacrifices. Maybe. <laughs> Unless you want to. But <laughs> but it could be really fun though just to uh just get a group of us or at least in our hive mind here because there's lots of the yellow jacket hives. Sometimes honestly I feel like some of the posts and comments I've seen, are, are they even watching the same show as me? Like, I don't, you know, like some of them I don't connect to or I see, or maybe it's just like, I can't unsee my wisdom and hermetic knowledge at this point. But, you know, like once you see, once your eyes open, you can't unsee these things. We're drinking our own Kool-Aid, guys. <laughs> okay, so let's, do you want to okay. do a poll or music of the week? Yeah, let's do music of the week real quick. Hey. Let me pull it up. Well, obviously okay. you can tell I've been feeling on... Rat in the cage, spot <laughs> on my rage. I am still just a rat in the cage. Whoops! Oh, oh no, I just did it. Sorry, I just un I undid it. Oh yeah, Hold on. Let me pull it back up. Okay, so yeah, we chose "Bullet with Bl Butterfly Wings" by Smashing Pumpkins, and um, you know, I just want to so give credit where credit is due. Called, I'm just gonna tell you guys right now, <laughs> my husband has been spot on with his music predictions. He predicted, um something in the way by nirvana he totally called he said that the week before and then this week he said right before the episode started we were like what songs do you think they're gonna play and he's like i think they're gonna play smashing pumpkins i don't think i don't know if we've heard i feel like they may have done another smashing pumpkin song at one point but yeah he was like no we need that we need bullet with butterfly wings and then it came on so just right now, I just want to say his predictions for next week, and we'll see if it comes true. His predictions for next week were either Fiona Apple or Alice in Chains. So I know I've been waiting for Criminal. Like that's my favorite song, like ever since. I am so, so surprised that they haven't done Fiona or, Apple. Yeah, yeah, it's oh, it's coming. It's um, coming. And I also thought of that time. Uh, what about? Oh shoot, where am I going? I forgot now. <laughs> Sorry. Never That's mind. right. ADHD <laughs> mind. Sorry. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. Uh, Juicy says, yeah, the first Smashing Pumpkins song was in the pilot. I think you're right. I know there was another one at some point. They haven't fully left them out, but. Oh, um, well, I wanted the psycho killer. <laughs> yep. Run, run, run away. I want to do a reel with that for Nat because I was oh, like, okay. you know, that's a good one, but yeah. I don't know if that's the right timeline. <laughs> Talking well, heads, um, right? should we do a card poll just because yeah. you know, it is the theme it is the weird theme. and you know i i appreciate you guys i wasn't going too deeply into everybody's oh. cards because i am going to make a video so keep an eye out for that in the next couple days i'll have a video out for you guys i'm sorry i thanks for you know. stopping by kelly jean thank you thank you yeah thank you kelly jean um Sorry. happy monday hope you have a wonderful afternoon and we're going into a lot of just chatting today and i mean yeah, yeah like, it's cool I was anticipating keeping very much on task and we are doing nothing of the sort so oh yeah we have we have well we're keeping on task we're just not following <laughs> notes or characters or any of the normal format that we always do <laughs> but it's even if we do try to do that it's the same anyway so 
where well the hunt we're just having fun no i'm gonna do a card and then we'll do the the hunt um but um yeah so the and one other card i did want to point out actually that i thought was spot on was she got the four of diamonds and so our two earth mothers were misty and shauna you know with their diamond suits um but shauna's card is all about someone who is grasping at money and it's either them or someone around them is grasping at money and i thought that was really interesting for this episode just because like Mm -hmm. she gets called out for the um for Jeff being the blackmailer and you well, know not like att- she gets attacked for oh. don't accept don't say that you don't need the money I hated that because like I hate it like too. like literally Ty just attacked she just mm-hmm. attacked mm-hmm. versus which is her character the wolf you know she um, cuts deep she don't play games yeah <laughs> and also though like with Jeff the thing is is that um he like even though he blackmailed them it was for money but i don't think he would ever even if they didn't pay him he wouldn't have released the secrets i don't think he would like i I think he was just knew that's an easy way to get money but ultimately if they didn't want to pay it i i seriously would never see jeff doing that (laughs) this is funny i must have pulled this okay um here we go so we got the seven of pentacles which is about um, anxiety and just kind of being stopped in the middle of a project, which is exactly where I am right now. <laughs> where we all are. <laughs> and my my spirit character, which is Shauna. Um, <laughs> so progress may be stopped in the middle of a project. Be careful, or you may be involved in bad investments. There is the possibility of anxiety about finances or your effort is spent on the wrong things. I feel like that's a Shauna card right there i mean i feel like it really applies to me personally i don't know where the rest of y'all are vibrationally <laughs> but my you. energy i've been wasting it on lots of wrong things and not putting it into you guys which i should because like minds are <laughs> like minds are hard to find so i appreciate you all more than you know <laughs> we yeah we're doing we're doing great work here <laughs> <laughs> no we are because like i we Aaron and I were talking about the other day like we're not here just to cover yellow jackets we're here to just learn be informed give love create a community or group that is no drama and and some other people in the community have been forecasting some drama on us which has been like whatever and we're like hey we're too old for this like go like stop trying to attack us which is silly because it's like a community is a community you should never ever the fandom is where you go to get away from your everyday bs not do more not create more yeah so like Good let's just it. enjoy each other have fun get our theories out there and learn and grow and hopefully i can learn just as much i learned from aaron and from you guys as much you know i that's what it's about definitely that's what we're here for drama free having fun no bs mm-hmm. and just like enjoying the story because you know we've all partook in low vibrational behavior in fandom environments and that's not what we're here to do with yellow jackets so um stop trying but uh <laughs> yeah like we're literally getting emails about like to hate on people like telling us that we need to hate on somebody and i'm like no like don't okay. even respond to that because why do you even want to project any kind of hate in the universe at all? So I'm not about that. Yeah. Speaks more to the people sending the email than who they're. But listen, we're, we're, we're giving you still love to people who are lost. Like, yes. But we still love you too. You know, we're, we're proud of you. I think that. The wilderness accepts everyone mm-hmm. without judgment. So let's not judge each other and have fun. And also, you know, yeah, the, we want to build this fandom up. We want to have mm-hmm. fun and just be positive and have fun. And like, there are some really great people in this fandom that are like-minded, that are trying to have fun, that are, (laughs) you guys are so smart. I love it. I love all the comments you leave. I love just interacting with you guys every week and, you know, getting to be immersed in this and have so much fun with it and really just explore ideas. Um, I got another really great email. If Joe, if you're listening, um, I got a great email from Joe this week and we're going to talk, I'm going to talk about it next week and just kind of, I know you sent me another message and I just have not had time to. You're on my list. I literally have a list right here. Joe, you're number three on the list. And I just (laughs) was not in the place for it yesterday, but um, 
anyway, so I'm going to get a video out to you guys this week. And um, actually, I'm going to my goal and you guys can hold me to this here in the chat because I'm saying it live right now. My goal is to have two videos out to you guys before the end of the month. OK, so hopefully we can accomplish that. <laughs> three. We'll get three. We'll get three because I got yeah, well, well if it. I say three, then two seems a lot easier to accomplish. So, <laughs> yeah, aim high. There will definitely be one. <laughs> no, I do want to get two. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying really hard to get two out to you. And thank you, everyone who voted. I posted, mm -hmm. you know, what, what videos do you guys want to see? Because I have a lot of ideas, and it's been really hard for me to focus on one, you know, subject because. It's, it's, so know, hard. it's hard. And I literally, as I'm sitting here next to this tab that has StreamYard on it, I have three essays and another one in another window. So I have four essays open right now. So, <laughs> so I just want you guys to know I am yeah. doing things. It's just, again, I'm, I'm, I'm more about doing quality over quantity mm. right now with my Yellow Jackets content. That's just Amen. how I feel. That's how okay. life should be like and encourage the art and quality. Yes. Thank so, you, Andy. And thank you guys for yeah, all these wonderful chats. This is great. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Yeah. So okay. Well, let's go ahead. I guess we'll let me pull up a picture. We'll get into the very exciting the hunt. <laughs> the, hunt. the bum, hunt. Bum 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 bum. I love uh, that they're just finally realizing that it is the hunt that they need to just give in. And the moment that they did their animal, like, woo, 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 woo. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't know what that was, but <laughs> let's just all do it. <laughs> Everybody with me, animal noises. Was <laughs> <laughs> We're going to add an animal noise every week now. Yeah, we'll, we'll perfect it. You know, my favorite animal noise is the banshee scream from Misty. She is so funny hilarious i love it like because she does it like when she's looking for crystal you know she's got that raspy little she's like crystal and then when she does like once they all unleash the fury and they're like chasing after natalie she goes outside and she's like natalie and she's natalie! got like, a vicious little like banshee scream i'm like you are so like just you're such a an irish british like mythological banshee i love you misty you are epic <laughs> um, but yeah so they decide so live houston who plays van uh did a really great interview this week with tv insider and shared a lot of insights about the you know this whole scene um about the ritual and um and essentially shared that it was Van's idea to do the card game. And that's why Van was the person shuffling the cards to begin with. Um, Misty eventually takes the, the pile and, you know, goes and is the dealer, I guess you might say. Um, but yeah. And we see this kind of change in Van happening here where they become really like hardened. You know, there's this look on their face they're very serious you know it is a game they make like a game out of life and death but it's not a joke you know and um i just really loved i just i love how intense van is getting and by the end of the episode where they're just standing there looking at the looking at javi in the ice and just watching it happen just fully just expressionless, emotionless, just like, okay, this is what's happening. And you see such a distinct change in Van because Van's such a sweet, endearing character, you know? Um, so to see such a harsh change is, is really shocking. Yeah. And you see her, like, she's so fiery. I got mad fire vibes from her and I've been like trying to do the symbolism connections of each mm -hmm. element with the characters and Van is just, fire 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 and that's why i kind of i had the idea of it. the adult her is kind of a prometheus or like thief of the fire maybe even jeff too because jeff's a thief in general so apparently so with the gambling but but van with this like her just her face she's just so enthralled she becomes this animal like she's waiting to pray and she's one of the first people i think that are coming out in it so mm -hmm. that is something to be said there and then compared to her adult character who's lost that flame, the fire has gone out. So mm -hmm. I, she was so great. And, and her, the actress played such a great job here too. And at one point, yeah. like um, when they're standing there doing, you know, dealing the cards, 
Van um, Dinnick. I don't know if you noticed that the antler is the antlers are behind her and then yeah. the fire and all of it. So, I mean, it's very like indicative and, you know, we have this idea that like the antler queen is really like what I'm liking is, you know, they, sh they're shifting, they're showing different characters with the antlers on and, or like, you know, with the antler sort of symbolism behind them and that, but it's usually when they're in this liminal space, like with coach, when he was having that experience with Paul, um, and yeah, he did get an antler queen, didn't he? Yeah. I forgot about that. Cause so it, actually we were talking, I mentioned it earlier too, but, um, yeah, go ahead and then talk about what, cause she pulled the Jack of hearts. So don't forget to talk about that. Yeah. Okay. And the Jack of hearts is a really unique card and I will talk about that one. Um, but yeah, I think that it is important to notice that like, you know, each of these characters, when they have the, the antlers near them you know and again going back to the idea that they're the the antler queen is something that we have named her but it's the showrunners and the writers call her the oracle so seeing the antlers you know in when they're acting in this liminal space or in this sort of death dealing space um is sort of oracular in a sense i guess you might say but anyhow uh so van drew the Jack of Hearts. And Jack of Hearts is a really unique card. Um, it's a really exciting card. It's all about, you know, this person, I think Van's personality fits it really well. This person is playful and exciting. Um, and this card is also, this is, um, hearts are emotions, water, um, healing, that kind of thing. Um, but this person is also, okay, so this card represents sacrifice for love or for a higher cause. And for this reason, this is called the Christ card. It indicates serving others and humanity through love and sacrifice. This is a powerful messenger card and a bringer of new thoughts and ideas. I'm just reading you guys from my essay. Um, but this is my favorite part. All Jacks are youthful, next in line to the crown. They are neophytes in the meaning of their suit. The heart suit represents emotions and how we love. The jack of heart are emotional, dynamic, and willful. And I thought so, that was just... Oh, wait. Also, though, um, so if you go to, like, the elemental decks of cards, it's, like, fire, which is hearts. Fire is no, the meaning... water. It says fire in mine. Well, oh, it, well. yeah, clearly. No, that's not right. <laughs> well, the elemental decks. Elemental decks. It's pure. Oh, element. Yeah, oh, okay. Well, still, not so... Right. <laughs> it's, but this is what it says. It's like, in order to become pure gold, you must go through the tempering process of fire. And then the, the like Jack that. of Hearts symbolizes someone that represents a younger person who's willing to sacrifice themselves for a family friend or cause. Hearts, well, rural art, music, poetry, and the pursuit of beauty in any form. They signify, yeah. Mandy, while we're on this topic of Van and their card, because in the, where did I say? Well, maybe I don't have so yeah, Aaron and I we we but, play a lot with our cards, but we do have some different decks and things we do though. So, but still. But the but what I wanted to say too is um in the net in the new episode, hold on, where the hell, um or in the trailer for the new episode, we have this shot of Van, and she's they're drawing cards again, and Van's the only one we caught a shot of, but she gets. I want to say it's the five of clubs that's what it looks like to me so i haven't researched that card but we'll maybe we'll go mandy if you want to research that card real quick that'd be awesome um so yeah so i it should be interesting and i wonder yeah how we might read that transition but i think you're right mandy where there's like a tempering by fire and we see that so much with van like she is i think the heart jack of heart may be more applicable to like her relationship with ty and this idea of like a sacrifice for love because that's definitely something that they're faced with in their order or in their older stories yes luna one million percent We'll get to that. Um, <laughs> so, so five of five of clubs, you said. Yes. Right? Okay. So. so it indicates you're in the midst of battle, tension, and competition, in impacting your ability to move forward with your goals. It says a sign of victory is near, but you know you're going to have some trouble in the way. Um, arguments, conflict, fighting, disagreements. 
struggle opposition battles. So, hey, we're going to get some, are we going to get some major battles going? Are we going to get some, uh, who's going like to score that. a goal? We'll see. I Yeah, that's apt. And it, it's kind of like, you know, her cards that, you know, she draws this card in her younger years that is kind of applicable to the older years, but then also she applies or she draws a card in the older years that's somewhat applicable to her younger years as well. So that's kind of interesting. Um, so I, I think it's, we should look more into also the differences between the elemental deck of cards, the thought, and then like the regular <laughs> Because I think well, they all have something to play in this, but and it may be like the Thoth deck well, is based on the Egyptian astrology system, and and mine is probably well the research I was doing. So I used three sources. I guess I'll just tell you guys right now. My three sources that I used, I checked were um, the Rider Weight, which is kind of your standard tarot deck, Rider Weight. Um, I also checked my Celtic dragon tarot just because that's my personal favorite tarot deck. And then I used a website that's called meta metasymbology.com. And they, all they do is card playing card symbolism and like, yeah. So anyhow, um, but there are like a million, you know, there's so many resources for like what cards can mean, but I do think, you know, yeah, I'm interested in why yours is yours says. Well, I have uh, another one here that says the water for the hearts or cups, but um, I, I do think that they're all uh, well. Okay, this whole story is just water symbolism beyond. But again, like you said, it comes to fire. The fire was Shauna purifying. The fire once they've changed. The fire that was there that was lost. So it's going to be the oppositions. And I think that it also goes back to the basic alchemy stuff that we've talked about with the hermetic wisdom and them trying to, like right now, before they were finding their element, now they're trying to combine the elements. And that's why we're seeing all the matching up, the pairs, the dual, duas, the twos, that they're having more interacting um, scenes together because it's not about solo anymore. It's about pairing, the, getting the team back together to, to create the gold, the element that they need. Uh, they need to find the Anissa. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is that Anissa and Anissa? Or wait, oh, oh wait. Yeah, oh, okay. Nisa, yeah. <laughs> hey, actually, I have a Nisa Nisa parody that's dope. Is dope. As yeah, me. as Van. Oh my God, uh, man, you have to. That'd be epic. Well, it's so it's many... a Beyonce baby boy. Um, but <laughs> I've been really, close. I've been enjoying like playing with um, Thrones Yellow Jackets crossovers quite a bit, or like House of Dragons yeah. Yellow Jackets crossovers because I found a lot with um, um, Lottie and Helena. Yeah. And yeah, and also with um, with Shauna and Rhaenyra. Okay, I can see, but I yeah I okay so I love love a song of ice and fire, but I love yellow jackets more. Like I do something about yellow jackets has touched me deeply, ex in eternally, and has opened up in all this researching I'm doing, all this connecting with you guys. Like, I feel like I found my hive. Like I thought I found my hive in a song of ice and fire. But I feel like I've actually found a hive in like this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think it's better. I really do. I think Yellow Jackets is just brilliant. And it's not based on other books and other works of art. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just, very original. I mean, it, I mean, it is, but, it is, but, but it isn't. Very, you know, it's more mythological. And I mean, A Song of Ice and Fire is mythological based, but it's just like, well, a lot of it is, is like this new. <laughs> this is fresh meat. <laughs> and um <laughs> Andy, says, Elena is so much more likable and less trouble. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, she is the less trouble, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, let's see. All right. Oh. So we've okay, got did you think theme, during so this though? Did you think during this that I mean we don't think he knew he was gonna die, but the fact go get her, save her. Oh, this Oh, I love this. So, so this was definitely like a throwback to Doom Coming where, so yeah, so Natalie draws the queen card and, you know, we had seen her and Travis sort of make up earlier in the episode where, because they've been separated, like he's still angry with her about the whole thing with Javi's pants and which by the way, we, we need to get into that. Anyways, <laughs> we still have a lot to, a lot of ground to cover. Okay. So, um, yeah, they made up 
you know, he went over and he's like, you are a good person. And I'm sorry if I ever made you feel otherwise. And that was really sweet and touching. And so then later when it comes time for Nat, you know, she drew the queen card and, you know, was Travis just going to allow it? Was he going to just, by the way, I just love that they were just going to do it right there in the cabin, right there, right, right in the living room where they all sleep at night. Let's just spill a whole body's worth of blood. But anyway, um, but yeah, so, and Shauna has this hesitation, you know, she can't go through with it. And I do think it's really interesting also, um, actually, I wanted to talk about the connection between Shauna and Nat. It might be in the next photo. Um uh, maybe not. Anyways, um, so, sh you know, when Shauna was giving birth, she and Nat really had like this kind of close bonding moment where like Nat was the only one that Shauna was really allowing near her. And even when she was in that dream space, Nat was the only one that was coming in and checking on her and bringing her tea and this kind of thing. And so and Nat was also Nat and Shauna are the only ones that are not praying to the wilderness. Right. So I feel like they had this bond that happened. And so then when Nat draws the card, of course, Shauna hesitates because this actually, I think Nat might be the only person that she actually feels like they are on the same level, like they're operating with the same mindset that like, this is getting a little out of hand, the wilderness worship and all of this, like, I'm not down with it. And granted, we see Shauna like partake in this scene, but they're all partaking because this is a ritual for their survival versus a ritual by, you know, choice for spirituality. Um, so anyhow, but she hesitates, Shauna hesitates, she holds back, she can't do it. She puts the necklace on, on Nat and that probably even more so, you know, cause some hesitation for her. Um, but I think, yeah, so they, so Travis, he's like, no, not going to have it. He tackles Shauna, knocks her over and, and he stands up and he looks at Nat and he says, run. And it's very much so much like doom coming where. And wasn't there the, the minotaur vibes too there for, there for a second? There was like that minotaur vibes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love you've mentioned that last week about Travis that he's got Minotaur vibes, and I really oh, well, I like that. He a lot. is in Doom Coming, he becomes that, and then yeah, that's when Nat saves him. So then it's and like the reflection. Kind of, it's the sacrificial bull, right? And and then it comes back around to like the white moose and all of this. But um yeah, but it's interesting. So he tells her to run. Of course, she takes off running, and you know, which is so funny because it's like when you're um like prey versus you know a predator a predator and prey like once you run that sets off their 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 prey drive mm -hmm. right they, that's when they're going to start chasing after you so um but and they do they How? instantly switch into that animalistic mode where they're hooting and hollering and you know uh, misty's screaming and her banshee scream and they are all in and they go out and they're using those those wilderness skills that the listening, listen to what's happening around you. What do you hear? What do you see? What do you smell? And they're using all those skills to try and hunt her down. But I do love that they held Travis back. They're like, nope, you're staying here. In case we don't catch her, you're our backup meal. Yeah. And the, so the part that made me laugh and I was just like, how is that now? Because I just didn't was where she was running and she tripped and fell like yeah come on every <laughs> scary movie where the girl's running ah, they have to fall yeah. <laughs> and then they look back it was so like cinematically Very drama like, correct <laughs> yeah not, 1996 <laughs> horror movies oh god yeah. yeah but like how about even Nat's character like I did not expect her to do that come on but she did so yeah not I mean so it's yeah, it's remarkable because, um, you know, faced with the choice, it's like, of course, like Javi, bless his heart because he, he stayed silent all this time until it was time. And he chose, he was like, I'll protect Natalie, you know, this is the right choice. And I, I'll tell her, you know, I'll share where my hiding place was. And then um, it just so turns, I, turns around to bite him in the ass. No, I think about that. This is why I think about this. This is why I think Tavi's dead. And I think that Nat's the carrier to the boat underground. Because it said when it's when it's the time's right, he'll speak when he's ready. When he's ready, ready to cross on, ready to move on, ready to go. He, Nat, let me show you where the tree is. So he was trying to bring her to the tree of life, but he got stuck in the hole. Can we talk about the hole? Do you want to talk about it? I think you probably um well not yet. 
Not do you yet. mean for the moose? What you yeah. go ahead with what you have in mind. Go ahead. Okay, so I have this idea that the moose fell in the hole, same in the ice, a hole in the ice, which is symbolic of the inferno. The devil gets stuck in this icy lake, and that you know they're stuck there. So we we open the realm of we open the door with the hole in the lake. So that happened when we found Javi, right? Same mm -hmm. episode. We find Javi as soon as the hole's open. Javi came out of the hole. His spirit came out of the hole. Maybe those bones are, are in the tree are Javi's. Maybe he did somehow, you know, he does that cinnabar or does the mercury, like, does it melt skin? I don't know. <laughs> but I don't think the bones could be Javi's, actually. It may be. We'll see. But um, the, the thing is, is that he gets, he drowns the same way as the moose. Was that sim like, is it symbolism? Is it reflective? Was it um, foreshadowing in, in a sense? Like, were we getting these scenes ahead? But I really think it's something to think about, citizen detectives. Like, let's let us know what you think. Um, I want to do some more research into it. But the the fact that it's the same way, the fact that not reached before, but she couldn't, and then now she's not able to reach. I think there's something there more to it. Um, and I do think that it was, again, the, the connection between the underground and him going back. Because now that the doorway's open, now that Shauna has lost the baby, Nat's blood also might have been a trigger because she did some sort of self-sacrificing endeavor and blood on that. And again, cleansed with the fire of Jackie's body. She threw it onto the pyre. And now back, they're coming back. And now that this door's open since the spring, since Shauna let out her fire, since all that stuff, and Nat's able to now be the the gatekeeper again whereas lottie used to be now get nat is in that darkest she's able to return javi's body she's and she didn't even know she's doing it in 96 but that's what i'm saying is is there some i feel like there's really a connection with that now and like let's see where it goes i'm gonna do some more research on it just wanted to make a point what do you think do you want to add some more points to that Faye? sure well yeah i think you have a point like uh I mean, personally, I've always speculated that the moose is like Nat's animal familiar, right? It's sort of her protective animal. You know, she encountered it and um, the white moose is a sacred animal to the First Nations people. Um, and um, so, and it's a good omen to see that animal, to see a white moose, but white animals in general are sacred typically. Um, but so my thought has always been like by not, not killing the moose, it was a better omen for them. You know, if they would have eaten the moose, if they would have killed the moose, that would have been a bad omen for all of them. So by not doing that, it's been a good omen for them. And then again, when they find the moose in the lake, he's frozen in there and they try and get him out and he, you know, they fail and he sinks down to the bottom and and that feels like a complete failure at that because she failed to bring home food, to bring home meat. And that's like her purpose. However, I still think that was like a good omen because they hadn't consumed his flesh. What do you Wait, think? okay. She failed to bring home meat. This is her bringing home meat. There you go. Actually, that's a great point. That's a and, great and point. like, oh, yeah. even though the, the moose is a good symbolism, like the thing is, it, it just, I feel like it reflected hobby it, it could have reflected them all but like it could have been a symbol of hot for a hobby or just a symbol of hey here's my protective spirit of the wilderness that is helping guide us and keep us out of the darkness but now that darkness we've opened up the portal or hole in the ice to the darkness like that was our spirit protection you know because it, it, it you do mention that in your video is amazing um, but we've talked about like the the sense where that maybe that was something that had opened or protected us yeah. like you were you were just going on about. So well, and we should point out that that's the same episode. So um, or well, yeah, no, it's the same episode when they when the moose sinks in the ice is the same episode that Javi returns. Because that's when Lottie and Nat go out and do, you know, do their thing. Um, they go out for their little competition. And when they come back, and we've all kind of suspected, like, what brought Javi back? Was it something that happened with Lottie and her, like, you know, weird experience with the mall scene and all of that? But I think, yeah, that Javi might be more connected to the moose in this situation. Obviously, their deaths are, like, the same way, you know, frozen and 
sinking into the lake. So there is some level of foreshadowing there. However, it's like, yeah, was the moose always the protection over Nat? Like when she did the bloodletting onto Javi's pants, you know, wiped clean, cleans it with Javi's pants. Was that more of protection for her? Or was that more like a sacrificial, you know, did she do something to him? Did that have a negative effect on him? And, and also in that idea, you know, I had thought that that was kind of what may have brought Javi back to them was because it was his pants. They got burned on the funeral pyre. You know, it was the night they consumed Jackie. So there's like all of this sort of energy that's going on with those yeah. ideas. Um, I think it's the wilderness bringing like claiming the spirit back. Like mm -hmm. the spirit might've come back up through Javi mm -hmm. and then now the wilderness is claiming it back. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, definitely Javi and the moose are like, you know, kind of parallel because I feel like Javi is like that. He is like a sacred white animal because he is very special. He wasn't like the rest of them. You know, he wasn't participating when they were doing the really dark things, you know, when they ate Jackie's body or even when Jackie died or even, you know, doom coming is when they sent him off. So even all the, the crazy darker places that doom coming doom coming took them you know he didn't participate that and in that and then even when um there was the fight it was you know take javi into the other room yeah protect him from that his innocent you know he is innocent he, he couldn't is, look at the porn <laughs> exactly he is oh. like he's an example of like he's almost like a parallel to the white moose he's like a sacred you know a good omen amongst them kind of thing and so um, or, well, maybe not necessarily a good omen. I mean, obviously, a lot of the girls are speculating, like, he might already be dead, you know, yada, yada. But A symbol uh, in general, yeah. Yeah, he is symbolic of being, like, an innocent, something that should not... Because I even had this thought of, like, if he had drawn the queen card, it, you know, when they're standing mm -hmm. in the circle... No one would let they him. have done that. I don't think they would have. I First of all, I don't think Travis would have allowed them to like kill him. I don't think Natalie would have allowed them to kill him. I think the group in general has that much humanity left in them, especially mm -hmm. after the loss of Shauna's child, that like Javi is like a child and they wouldn't have done that. Yeah, they let him play the card game. But really, at the end of the day, if he had drawn the queen card, I don't think they would have let him or they would have killed him. But on that note, Javi was the one that drew the queen card because he brought the card back ultimately because originally the deck of cards had no queen cards. And yeah. this was in episode four or five, I want to say, where um, <gasps> he brought death back. Yeah. And Akil like, is like, where did you find the queen card? Yeah. Javi yep. so he already found the queen card. He already it appeared to him. And that's why I'm saying like with Lottie in the adult timeline. Whether or not, you know, it's intentional or not, the queen card appeared to her just like it appeared to Javi. So it reminds like, me. you might not, you might be powerless. You might think you can like manipulate the system, but if it appears to you, that might just be like how mm -hmm. it is. But do you and think it, that having the cards though also manipulates the system? I feel like that is so, like, yeah, we're leaving it a chance, but it's still manipulative because you have to wait for nature to be nature. You can't push nature's timeline because you're hungry. You can't push nature, the timeline of nature. You really can't. So I, I feel like the cards are not even the safe way out, even though it's kind of appearing as an angle for them to find it. It's still pushing. And there, and nature made that clear here, mm -hmm. like showed the same way. But yeah. it reminds me of, um, I don't know if you all know Tom McDonald. I'm a Tom McDonald stan. Like he's also from Canada, <laughs> reps hard on our, on our, he's a rapper that reps. That's the one I share with you all the time that I feel He's a rapper oh, okay. that raps about the government and, and stuff like that. But anyway, he goes, knock, knock, who's there? Y'all effed around and left death in. They oh. effed around and let death in. So, and we all know that that is one of the things that opened up the doorway to death. Mm -hmm. So maybe with their seance, that's when Jackie became, I don't know, just Yeah, or connection. even, I think, yeah, the seance was exactly when, because, you know, and it's interesting, like, Jackie um, in – in that episode, the seance, um, that's blood hive. Uh, and, um, in that episode, I love that, you know, that's the other, like another really good Yeah. Episode. Blood hive is my favorite episode. It's so, like definitely so my second, you know, yeah. And, it's, yeah. I love all the extra, like if, if there's like these episodes where they're doing like extra witchy shit, like those are my 
those are my favorite episodes. The other ones I'm like, cool, whatever. But no, when they're doing the witchy shit, the seances, uh, doom coming, you know, ritualistic behavior. Yes, please. I will take much more of that. Um, <laughs> um, one really great thing about this scene here, I, you know, it's interesting. There's seven of them and, um, obviously Javi's dead, but, um, Again, going back to Melissa, like she drew a card and she's also featured in a lot. I think they're like increasing Melissa's role. I feel like they're putting yeah. her more in. All of them. Um, yeah. All, all of them. Yeah. The minor characters in this episode definitely got a little bit more screen time. Uh, Jen, maybe not so much. I don't know what's going on with Jen, but she's always there. So, <laughs> but she didn't draw a card and neither did Mari. Mari didn't draw a card either. So. Um, there's something to be said. I think Kelly, uh, the antler queen had her own little theory about, um, the people that drew the cards. I'm not going to tell you actually, I'll let, I'll leave it for her recap that's coming out in a couple days. So, yeah, we have, uh, so much, we have so much to talk about. So, so much. <laughs> so, but I did also, you know, one thing I really thought was unique about this scene and also, okay, well, actually a couple things. <laughs> so, well, Number one, okay. Ty. Okay. This is the other tie, to be clear. Yeah. Ty did not participate when when they cannibalized Jackie's body. She was absolutely horrified by that whole thing. And I feel like Ty has been um, drifting in and out of herself throughout this whole episode. You know, we see her encounter with Van early on. And she see, she's seeing the other one, like, face to face. And I think this is, like, the Crazy first Crazy like smiling, the trickster smile, that mm -hmm. inner deep smile that uh, I have some people in the Yellow Jackets Facebook group I'm in were talking about the movie smile and all the, all the yeah. similarities. But that totally. smile, that smile yeah. is everything. I like that actress that's in that movie. Yeah. Um, okay, sorry to but yeah, so I, you know, I think that this is definitely the other one because, you know, she was really struggling and I feel like there's been, uh, there was a couple moments like in earlier on, like when she sits up, like, first of all, she hears the dripping. So I think that's the other one because the other one's obviously more in tune with the wilderness as Lottie pointed out. Um, but secondly, like when they're having that conversation, you know, when Misty comes down and she says, Lottie said, you know, if she dies that we should eat her body and Ty's laying there and she's kind of like, Oh, just listening to it. And you can tell she's like, kind of just at odds with herself. And then when she finally sits up and she says, you know, we need to find a way to stay alive and it's not her. Um, I think that's when the other ones come out taken over. And that's the one we see for the rest of the episode, because that one part, you know, was participating in the, the card game. That one's participating in the hunt. That one has that vicious look in their eye that, you know, when they're out there and she's the one listening, she's the huntress. She can, she can hear, you know, what's going on. And, and she's using those wilderness skills that she gathered from like Lottie circles. Right. And then they go out there after Javi. And I just don't think that Ty in her, you know, normal state is going to participate in all of this because she was so fundamentally against it when they, when they ate Jackie. Also, I think she's just too, like, I don't do this. They do it. Like she's too kind of self-absorbed in a sense, uh, not just self-absorbed, but just, she does whatever she wants to do in her own way shape or form mm -hmm. whether it be changing the narrative or changing the team by getting her someone's leg broke totally or, you know saying that hey this is not me um and it's crazy because that that aspect of herself like that um the normal tie is actually like the more um unhinged tie right like we think like the other one is you know so dangerous or what have you but i feel like the normal tie is actually more dangerous because she's dishonest with herself and she's also very selfish in the way that she operates you know i agree a hundred percent like i really do and she's more willing to take those risks whereas like the other tie is just kind she was there to protect believe it or not in a couple of the episodes or like how she helped shauna or she guided she guides she's a seer as well we've talked about symbolism to her being the seer um and she has that other thing you know the the man with no eyes the her grandmother could see people too she has that in her bloodline so and the wolf is also one of those or the coyote was able to transform 
teleport or transform from different realms of dark realms, but they weren't like considered a god or someone like the shaman or Hermes or uh, Sharon who could actually go between realms and help guide people, they, but they could like see at least. Um, so there's some like it wasn't a god, it was like a demigod type vibe, you know? Absolutely. Um, yeah. And also in the scene, I, you know, I want to point out because this is my own personal headcanon of Shauna, you know, and the ice and the moose situation and the baby, because you guys know that I believe that that was how she originally like displaced her placenta or detached it or what have you, um, was when she was out there on the ice trying to pull the moose out. And I did notice that in this episode, you know, when Javi's out there struggling, like, and they're all pulling him back up out afterwards, like Shauna, she's not participating. She's not pulling anybody out the ice anymore. So I just thought that was worth pointing out. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, how they want to pull the moose up, but they don't want to pull out little Javi. <laughs> yeah, I, that was so bad to watch. I just it was really yeah. It, but like I mean, how Misty came in and she she said just save Nat. And, and even though she seems like crazy, but she's like, Nat. No, I have to choose you over her. Um, and I mean, bless her heart. I mean, well, maybe. I don't know. I mean, she's obviously, that's 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 Misty for you, right? Slightly psychopathic, uh, you know, that she would be willing to save Natalie over the child. Just saying. <laughs> Wait, was she, the, was she the closer of this situation? Hey, she's she's, 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 there. I she love this. I was kind of, I was kind of afraid. There was a momentary fear when she comes running up and she's got the axe and she's like, you know, That's... running towards her. But then she kind of flings it off, and I'm just like, oh, Misty, I love you. This is gonna be me on Halloween, <laughs> <laughs> running after my child. Yeah, <laughs> I'll make him dress up like a little white moose. Mm -hmm. Oh my <laughs> god, I'll... that'd be hilarious. I'll do it. <laughs> Don't but yeah, me. so here's some more of these ice photos. But yeah, um, oh, we'll, RIP. We'll leave it on Hobby for a few. I feel like he deserves. Let's it. say a good word for Hobby. Yeah, yeah. A moment of silence for Hobby. Bless your little heart. No, um, fry up the barbecue. <laughs> yep, exactly. Fire up the barbecue, and uh, you know there are some interesting shots from next from the trailer for next week uh, with. Travis and obviously, you know, he's taking a moment with Javi's body, but you know, um, I posted a poll last night and actually you guys are awesome. So many of you have voted. Um, but I, my question was, what are they going to tell Travis? And if you guys have any ideas, why don't you drop them in the chat? What do you think they're going to tell Travis about Javi? Because do you think they're going to tell him the truth? Um, do you think they're going to make something up? Is this going to become a collective secret amongst the girls uh, that they're not willing to share? I, you know, I don't know. Um, let well, me pull up. I think it's going to be mouthwatering, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> do you think, do you think that the meat's going to be like a little bit softer because it's a child or maybe, uh, maybe the meat's going to be, have a nice kind of, um, what is the, what's the word? <laughs> when you marinated, marinated <laughs> Marinated, marinated in lake water the flavor of of hermetic wisdom <laughs> marinated lake water canadian water is different you know so maybe yeah, there's more how they say new york water has more salt in its bagels i don't know there could be something there i mean does canadian water have more salt in it mercury watered marinated javi Oh my. <laughs> have you, well, have you, tri have you tried the hobby? Have you tri <laughs> okay, I messed up. I messed up. Go ahead. He's, you know, he's probably much, he's probably a tender fella because, you know, he is quite young. He's a veal. He's veal. Okay. Um, so, so salt water marinated I, veal. My options that I have listed are um, yeah, so what will the girls tell Travis or will the girls tell Travis the truth about what happened to Javi? And the options were they'll tell him it was an accident, the wilderness chose, or Nat will take the blame. And the majority of you guys ch said the wilderness chose. 50% of you guys said the wilderness chose. And I got a lot of votes, 228, and for just having this posted last night. So thank you all if you voted. Um but the wilderness chose and you know i guess travis is just gonna have to deal with 
facts, you know, facts are facts. And they claim, you know, the wilderness has claimed his father and his brother now. And, you know, if coach Ben is gone to the cave, um, <laughs> then Travis is the last, the last man. He's the last man standing. And we know he makes it out of the wilderness, but not really, yeah. not physically, but not, not mentally. I don't think. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> just another word pun play is Mari going to marinate the hobby? <laughs> Ma Mari's gonna, Mari. What's Mari going to near near? Yeah. Mari. Maybe that is, maybe that's why Mari's named Mari. She's marinating everything <laughs> in her pot. Hey, there you go. I like it as her little cauldron, <laughs> her witchy cauldron. <laughs> We're ridiculous. My children are in the background, <laughs> so I'm sorry if you hear them. But anyways, we should probably start wrapping it up yeah. now. But yeah, so I mean, so many amazing things that we probably didn't even get to all of it today. Is there, is there something um, you guys want to say really quick in the chat? Just one, two, three before we say go. Yeah, drop any of your last questions or comments in the chat. I did want, uh, well... What are your final predictions or finale predictions while while they're dropping some questions, babe? So my, do you well first off, do you think that this is going to be the finale, or are they going to be like the Pallades and give us one more that's not seen? I really got, I really hope so. Please, Ashley and Bart, we pray. You to know you. that seems like it's been so, like so heavily hinted at, even throughout the whole. You know they've. Because I feel like even when they did the hiatus, they were kind of dropping some hints at us, like there was something so. else coming, some sort of surprise coming and what have you. And so I would love to get a, a surprise 10th episode, or even if it was like um, something different, like maybe they do a family flashbacks or something like that, you know, they're, they're, what their families the are book. going through without them um, would be a really interesting, you know, bonus episode for us. Um, also, I like the, uh, I, I felt like, honestly, I felt like the past three episodes have been finale episodes. Uh, I, I can't get, I thought there was gonna be an Emmy for Shauna beating, you know, on, uh, they've all been so good. They really yeah. have. They really, yeah. The second half of the season is, I mean, the whole season has, has been great, but I really feel like the endings Digest. are really, yeah, they're hitting it. Um, very hard. I think that, um, you know, my biggest prediction, like for the story as a whole, and I would love to see it at the end of this episode, because I think it would be like a great cliffhanger to leave us with them heading north. I feel like ultimately the story is, is trying to drive the women back to the wilderness, back to the north. So um, I am really hoping that that's what we're maybe going to end this with. You know, I think it's becoming glaringly clear that like obviously shauna can't stay she can't stay you know any like she needs to get the hell out of dodge and right now you know before the police come before she this is all over the news and all of this kind of thing like now is her chance she needs to get out of the country and she's a fairly like you know she's the kind of woman she can really fit in wherever she goes you know she's very momish she's very like no, I think she could, like, appearance-wise. Oh, she's not physically, yes. Yes. Physically, yes. She can yes, go into like... any Walmart, in any place in the country or what have you, and nobody's going to bat an eye. There, She just looks like a normal mom. So I feel like if she got, you know, once they get to Canada, they can probably, you know, bypass some things, uh, you know, make their way mm -hmm. and stay under the radar, hopefully. It's just a matter How... of getting past customs. And if they can do that, then How bold. crazy how crazy was it though that like shauna's first instinct is to go home where she where's like they're like uh isn't it better to stay here where you're not terrible. known where you are don't listen to your own instincts shauna they are you have terrible instincts okay <laughs> i love you but oh my god i did love the scene of van throwing the keys like i loved it it was epic it are was you like... insane <laughs> <laughs> I, that's Who? such a redhead move you Key? know <laughs> I have a redhead mom. I have a redhead daughter. You give them what they want when they want it, unless you want your life to be ruined. So <laughs> I hey, love my 
frightening. Like fiery redheads, but good God, they're frightening. Uh <laughs> As for me, from a family of redheads, giant. actually, I'm the darker redhead. All of my, fa- like, half my family is, like, ginger, ginger, ginger. Mm-hmm. But I have dark hair because I'm mixed with uh, my dad's Native American or Indigenous and um, mm-hmm. Filipino. So, believe it or not. <laughs> Even though I look I like a- I look like a gringa loca. Gringa loca. <laughs> gringa loca. That's what uh, I'm referred have- to with all my Spanish <laughs> Peru. With my Peruvian family. My yeah. extended Peruvian family. Well, we love you. Like Gringa Loca, cave me more. <laughs> um, but we, yeah, it's, yeah, I just got my dad's <laughs> Italian body hair and then my mom's ginger paleness, so. I know, and your daughter, <laughs> your daughter's ginger hair is just, she is a fire. She's so fire, I love my it. My daughter, she looks just like Merida, if you guys are mm-hmm. familiar with Merida. <laughs> that is Mirada. my little devil child <laughs> yeah. um like but Van, yeah so Van's i don't know fire. what's that Van's fire anyway we'll go back yeah, to, we'll Van circle back to Van. Fire. <laughs> okay i'm trying to find i'm so sorry i was trying to find there was one i did want to read you guys a passage from yes. Jorge that well, i thought you're looking... you all would enjoy i just am trying to find the exact here it is oh okay I was going to say, I'll give my finale predictions. Really no, go good, ahead. Give yours. Well, the thing is, uh, as someone who I am telling you is practicing and learning hermetic wisdom and trying to open up to that kind of stages, I'm realizing that all my predictions mean anything. And no matter how much I can look and search, ultimately, none of it matters. <laughs> so that's my prediction is that we're going to be blown out of our mind one more time. Um, I also think that they're going to... I don't know if they're going to give us them actually consuming or eating again. I think there's going to be more of a combat battle about that because obviously with Travis, it's going to be like torn. And, and that way that we chose that card coming forward in the five of cups or spades, I think there's going to be a lot of battling this next episode and between not just them, but like in the future, them where like with accepting the truths and we'll go from there absolutely okay i love this and you know what i will say like on on the note of your hermetic knowledge you know your hermetic <laughs> wisdom and all of that i really think that we're getting a nod to that idea um through coach ben and you know his whole thing mm-hmm. with like the magus i think he has to go through um sort of some soul tuning in order to get to the mental dominance that he's trying to achieve, right? Like, I think, you know, he realizes that these girls are all physically dominating him. And um, the best that he can do is to mentally play a mental game. And nobody's really doing that at this point, just because these girls aren't like, they're not mature enough to recognize to play a mental game. He's the only one who has the foresight, the age and the, you know, kind of to know the, you know, the knowledge to know that you're going to have to do that. You're going to have to mentally dominate these girls in order to gain the upper hand again, because they have no respect for you and they'll eat you basically is what it's going to come down to. They're going to kill you and eat you unless you can outwit them. And so I feel like, you know, he goes to his cave of knowledge. He takes his book with him, the Megas, and I'm sure he's going to spend a lot of time, you know, it's, it's, we still have this question of like how Javi kind of gained this knowledge, this inner wisdom and, you know, all of his drawings and what they sort of indicate. And, um, okay. So, like, oh, go ahead. Um, yeah. About that though. Uh, first off, CC, don't follow me. People just do not like, I don't, first off, I only Insta when I'm like attention seeking and single, which was like 10 years ago. Like, don't follow me at Faith Fire. If you want to follow me, don't follow. Oh. Or if you want to send me a message, fine. I bet I'm not on Instagram hardly at ever, but that'd be cool. If you want to connect on Insta or Twitter at mandolin is where you can connect and we can, you know, you can be friends. But besides that, um, I do want to talk about their age. And this is the thing that you said about Van, which reminded me. Um, the kids, they're kids still. They're kids having kids. They're babies. They're, they're still 16. You know, they're still, they're not quite adults yet. And in this kind of knowledge and base seeking for more, you realize that like innocence, like when you're born and you have not experienced something, you have no learning 
you, you're experiencing things from just what they are. They're experiencing things just as they are. Whereas Ben and older people, when you go back to experience something, you have all of this um, applied knowledge or wisdom or you know about things or you have different reflections about, hey, I know what to do now or I have diff different imp imprints from your family or imprints from other people. Whereas the kids now at this point, it's very primal it's very just nature in general at that point whereas he he has to defy nature and he did and now he's starting to embrace it but he has to like see this whole nature from a different perspective of his mind which i like mm -hmm. but anyway i just wanted to point that part out because there's like innocence and i think that that's a whole giant trend right now especially in uh that's kind of in the trend of astrology if you're following anything thing like that but and like as you get older which like birthdays you know when you're first born it's like the creator saying you matter you're put in physical matter and now you have to learn it but as you get older you realize that that innocence is a knowledge in itself to be unaware though you know there's a difference be between unaware. there's a <laughs> difference be between unaware. being willfully blind and then like innocently blind you know there's just a huge difference between that the childlike naivete versus yes ignorance naive naivete but the childlike naive the childlike structure we're supposed to be childlike even if what whatever religion you follow almost all of them say the same thing Re it, reflect and go back to that childlike nature be in yeah, wonder be in true. awe mm -hmm. yeah exactly so yeah there's something to be said about the differences in that and where the girls are. And I think that also my predictions for the next season are the girls are going to have to embrace that childlike nature again. I can fully see that happening and them having to go back and admit that that is a part of them and it's real, but it's a changing part of them. And it's something that, yes, we accept our traumas, but we have to be aware moving forward and just know how to react and know how to like adjust to them and that know what our weaknesses are like lying how we always try to lie and stop doing that. You know, that's kind of actually a, um, a like a callback to the Bacchanal scene because the main ads, you know, they are sort of willfully ignorant to what their actions are. Yes, they are in this sort of like ecstatic frenzy of worship of Dionysus and you know, they run around in the forest and they have their thirsts and they stab it into the ground and upsprings milk and upsprings wine. And, you know, they are these very fruitful women um, that worship the God, but they also do, they are in their frenzy. They are driven to do some pretty crazy things like rip people apart. There's a, a part of the story where it's questionable. Did they kill some children, rip some children apart, you know, rending them apart? Um, mm -hmm. all, all, There's so many parallels. Spagus, I think is what they call it, or almost spagus or something like that. Um, and where it's the ripping apart of the body, and this is all done in Dionysian, this is, these are terms that are specific for Dionysian ritual, where they're rending the body apart, ripping a body apart, limb from limb, and then consuming the raw flesh. And so yeah. there is something sort of in that, in their Dion, Dionysian frenzy that they experience, their maenadic frenzy, um, that we are, you know, that we have to question, yeah. right? And I think um, that primitive the, thing is okay. going to have, they have to go back to being primitive. I mean, they have to embrace it and in their primal nurture nature versus nurture again well so. you can't suppress it like lottie said can't. Can't. she just doesn't and want to be suppressed the more i watch it though aaron the more i i definitely see your parallels to all the mayas and dionysian stuff and of course the whole point of that story was is it a tragedy or is it a comedy you know <laughs> is it mm -hmm. it's both or is it it's how you look at it justice of the gods you know kind of thing and you're just uh, at their whim sort uh -huh. of thing so there's a lot of yeah okay um i love this comment from yasi i need to we'll steal adam's body from the morgue that's a fantastic idea. yeah because my She's thought great. was that they they killed the cop you know that was like oh they must have killed the cop but ah. any of these things any of these ideas are very like <sighs> um i love it they can be traced it. back and probably killing the cop would not be the best idea so maybe he's leading them off the case so he can get in there and take adam's body. i like it i mean 
Well, any gangster movie, you know, that killing a cop causes way more drama and way yeah. more attention than anything. So, like, I don't think they're going to do that. But yeah. I, but you never know because they're pretty dumb with some of the stuff they do with their lying. But I love this idea, too. And but what about the Pecorino? I'm sorry. I have to, the grated Pecorino. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I laughed a lot. At throwing that, that out like, there. Really? <laughs> it really, like... Eat- I cannot eat pecorino cheese the same though. Thanks. No, you know, and grating cheese, like maybe I'll buy it pre-grated. We'll just move the soft, soft cheeses <laughs> for the next year. Only brie, <laughs> only oh soft cheeses, God. blue cheese, <laughs> hobby cheese. I wonder if there's a hobby cheese out there. So. Possibly. Okay. So I wanted to um, read this passage to you guys. Yes that I thought was really unique um, while we're on the subject of Dionysus and the main ads um, and Persephone, which we have talked a lot about, you know, with the parallels with Shauna and Jackie and Demeter and Persephone and the Eleusinian mysteries. And um, anyways, I just, I've been reading this book um, and I thought this passage was really interesting. So, and there are some words in Greek, so I will have to skip them. So it says one became an initiate blank through blank. These are Greek like lettering. Uh, Water and darkness played the chief part. In Agre, a suburb of Athens, the water came from the Elysis and the initiation was held in honor of Persephone through the lesser mysteries, though the lesser mysteries were at the same time in honor of Demeter. And Hecate too is proved to have been operative in Agre. And they actually have a triple goddess aspect. So Demeter, Persephone, and Hecate. Um, Okay, so it was above all the underworld. It was above all the underworldly Persephone, the queen of the dead, to whom the road of this initiation led. The head of the initiand was wrapped in darkness, just as the antiquity brides and those vowed to the underworld were veiled. The word for to initiate means to close and is used for eyes and mouth alike. This is the Greek word um, of initiate. The initiate remained passive, but the closing of the eyes and the entry into the darkness is something active. The word blank is a nomen agentis, the passivity of Persephone of the bride, the maiden doomed to die, is re-experienced by the means of an inner act, if only an act of surrender. Our sources speak of an imitation of a Dionysian happenings. As a sacrificial victim and one who is doomed, Dionysus is the male counterpart of Persephone. So I just thought that was like really interesting considering like this whole story at large because we've seen so much Dionysian Mm -hmm. overtones and then we've seen like Jackie has so much Persephone overtones. So I just was like, oh my God, I love that. And the ties... Yeah, I'm sorry. And, Go ahead. What? The ties with no eyes, man, is what Andy's saying, and yeah. as well as the um, closer, the closer ties. There's so many little things that you said in there that tie. This right. Go ahead. I'm, I'm gonna link this book um, because I, um, you can download it for free. But actually, there is an audio, like a woman does a reading of it. It's not the you know most professional polished reading of the story but it's worth listening if you put it at 1.25 speed you can definitely get through it in you know just a couple hours and the whole thing is so good the oh my god it's so good there's so many connections to all the things we see in this story including the purple including um casting pigs into pits um you know all these things uh how fire, how Demeter is connected to, she's not only an earth goddess, but she's also a fire goddess because her, the grain, her, she's a goddess of the grain and of the earth and the grain has to be cooked. It has to be put into the fire in order to be consumed. So there's even like cannibalistic overtones to that idea. The seed has to be like cast into the fire in order to be consumed. Very like visually like Jackie's body, you know? And they refer to love Persephone it. as, you know, she's the seed, she's the fruit of Demeter's body. I love um, it. And also, but as someone who is in the underworld and spends that the winters in the underworld, she's the protector of the seeds. So she watches over the seeds through winter. And that's very symbolic, actually, of the Kaliak as well. It's the, it's the 
who's the writer? The good Corey, 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 yeah. Corey. If you just look that up, I just put it in the chat. Corey. Yeah, it's called Corey, and um, it's by uh Carl Kerenyi. Um, it's K E R E N Y I. And Carl Jung also wrote a chapter in the book. Um, and then I think they wrote another chapter like mm -hmm. together. Um, but yeah, so that's fabulous. That's our homework. This I, I meant to listen to it too, but I didn't get a chance. But it sounds like it's just like right on point. So book club, let's roll, let's go. I'll link it in the description after we're done here, just so you guys can go and you can find the audio book, or I'll um also link where I found the actual yeah. written book because I have it saved on my computer too. So um anyways, yeah, I just love that so much. There was so much that book is so rich. I love it. But anyhow, you guys, well do you have out. any final thoughts before um we wrap it up and get ready and we'll be here next week for the finale, which I am nervous <laughs> and excited for. <laughs> yeah. Are we ready to Jackie out? I think right, so. let, oh, me let me get make my sure we're prepared for Jackie, Jackie here. Out, yeah. So I don't <laughs> screw this up as Thanks per a year. lot. Um, but oh no, I'm in the wrong. I know oh, we've said bye a couple times, but you know what? That's okay. Hello, goodbye. You say goodbye. I say hello. <laughs> anyway, exactly. we love it. We're gonna look forward to it. And please for sure comment, like, you know, we uh get some questions or ideas just ready for the finale on, on today's chat if you come back and just drop it in the comment section we are going to go crazy next week i know it. yes we definitely are we're gonna we'll i mean as if a three and a half hour you know every <laughs> week we've been increasing our um <laughs> <laughs> and, we stream, so. <laughs> and the worst thing about it is we're like let's write these notes and let's try to keep it for an hour two max two max but mm -hmm. whatever we're here <laughs> yeah we just we go and then things happen we'll and work on I don't it. Know, this is my second three and a half hour long stream i've done about this episode this week so you know you guys have plenty <laughs> of my voice to fill your ear holes <laughs> And also, my brain is melted. <laughs> and my my rapid ADHD <laughs> hyperautistic, yeah. hyperautistic brain coming at you all the time. So it's thanks. been a long season too, <laughs> but we've 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 gotten through it with you guys, and we couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> On that part, let's die for the week. Well, thank you all for being here, and we will see you all next week. And we love you all. Jackie out. Oh, wait, I got to push the button again. <laughs> <laughs>